that's how I am. Like, you see, like, Joe, and they build out their whole spot. Dude, my thing is I got to get going on mine. I got to keep going. Like, this is started, good. This I'll is do dope, a couple. Though. We just literally moved in here and just set up. That's where me and Sax do our show. That's like, dope. we used to do the couches and stuff, and now mm-hmm. we got the table, and I, I like the couches more. I think mine is a little too relaxed. Really? Yeah. I don't like, no. I, I my, dig it, though, man. It's, it's like, we be, I be, like, rocking and shit. You know See, what I'm saying? And so, that's what's funny. I like I was, this. I like a table. Really? Yeah. I yeah. do, too. Something. We good? Are you taking off, then? All right, man. Happy birthday. Hey, thank you. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> um, yeah, there's Pleasure. this thing on the side if you need to move uh, that. Yeah, See, good. when you say it's too relaxed, it's funny because... As uh, guys, welcome to the podcast. By the way, we just roll right into it. Let's I don't do give it. a fuck, yeah. right? I, I do the same thing. Um, you did a, you did a podcast not too long ago, and I was fucking laughing so hard. This is where I was like, I gotta, ta- I gotta hang out with this guy. I gotta talk to this yeah. guy because you, you, you vibe the whole thing. Right, right. You were, you were podcasting with a couple of your boys, and you're like, uh, I just had this download, <laughs> and I'm watching, and and you're like. Your shrooms are kicking in. As you look to your guy, <laughs> yeah, and it was funny because he's like, he's like slushed yeah. back he, in he's his melting. shit. He's yeah, melting. you can yeah. see it, right? Yeah, because I, I think that was his first time doing shrooms. For real, yeah. I was laughing so hard because then you're like, he looks over, he's like, yo, the, the I wall. see the mothership, and yeah. I thought you were gonna fall into the other shit. <laughs> I, I was laughing so room, hard. Bro. It's not I was moving. like, dude, that's yeah. the shit. That's the yeah. kind of jam. You always been like, by the way, guys, Michael Sheed needs no introduction. Uh, we've been rapping. Yeah. trying to get together Inst- for Insta homies. a long time yeah. you know what i mean yeah. but you've always been like that like you just seem like we're very stereotypical as people right i yeah, am sure. I, I, I acknowledge that Same. like Same. i went to burning man a couple years ago mm. you ever been to burning man I haven't been to burning man bro you gotta go it's a trip i went to coachella at least one time i went to coachella last really? year but it's a different vibe right? different vibe burning i went to burning man and my biggest takeaway from burning man is like how judgmental i was because mm-hmm. you don't know who you're talking to a burning man you could yeah. be talking to a billionaire you could be talking to a broke that's dude usually the case too. across the board yeah. so it's like fuck man i judge the shit out of people mm-hmm. right we're super stereotypical but like as i started looking at your social media it was like this dude's talking about sovereignty. This dude's talking about masculinity. He's a father. Mm-hmm. He's a businessman. Yeah. You, you're in the black community. The yeah. and you did a, po- a post where you're like, you know what? I'm going to start like not identifying as as like race at all. Like right. we're going like, to yeah. dismantle race. Period. Yeah. I'm like, I fucking like this guy. Yeah. You always been like this. I mean, I've always been a, a free thinker. You know, I was the only child, so that leads you to be real creative, right? And I grew up in a uh, a, a family, it's a weird, my combination is so strange. Tell us about it, man. So my grandparents was solid, super solid, man. And my grandparents' generation was solid. My parents, not so much. So, but my grandparents did a lot of the rearing and the education and they, they had me in private schools. You know, I was valid Victorian. I was always a good student. I just loved learning and I had a very inquisitive mind all my life. <clears throat> but also at a young age, I, you know, I fell in love with boxing um, because my family loved boxing, you know, and growing up in New York is very like, it's a, it's overcrowded, Mm -hmm. especially when I grew up, it was a lot different than how it is now. So I grew up in a very competitive environment, right? So you had to like fight, Mm -hmm. claw and be loud to get heard or get seen or get resources. So boxing was perfect for that. I play every sport, but boxing was my shit because if I win, it's, it's, it's my victory. If I lose, it's on me. Yep. There's nobody to blame, nobody to take credit for my shit. And, I, and with other sports, it was just like, like we would lose, like baseball, we'd lose, but I was good. Yep. I didn't like that shit, right? But anyway, but my family was just so dynamic because my mother, um, she had a really difficult life. And you know she ended up you know, marrying like drug dealers and shit like that. So I grew up in a house, I grew up like rich at first. With the you know, my mother was married to the biggest drug dealer in New York City at the time, so I grew up seeing a lot of shit that a kid shouldn't see. But my mother always protected me, you know what I mean, and we were very pri- privileged. So I had, I had access to like good education. I played instruments, things like that. So that already had me a little bit different. By the time I got to like public school and everything, so <clears throat> I was in a chess club, played saxophone, <laughs> piano, all of that. Then I was boxing. Then I'm a, then. I had a lot of confidence because my mother's a very strong, powerful woman. Her husband was a boss. So I was like, you know, who are you to tell me? You know what I'm saying? So I had a little attitude. And then my father was around, but he had he had to do a, a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So we always had contact, but I didn't have access to him for a while till I was older. How old were you then? When like, I had access like, to my father, like during that time, yeah, uh, like oh. little, little kid, teenager, yeah, yeah, all the way up to 
I left uh, New York when I was like 19. Got it. So and then I was with my father all the time. And like when I was, you know, growing into a man. So <clears throat> he would give me wisdom, you know what I'm saying? A lot of wisdom, a lot of uh, man wisdom, you know what I'm saying? Like shake a man hand, firm handshakes, eye contact, eye. Yeah. your word is your bond, all of that kind of stuff. So he gave me a real solid foundation as well as my grandfather and my grandmother. My mother gave me a lot of passion, you know what I mean? My mother's the strongest person I know. <clears throat> Likewise. Um, you know, full disclosure, my mother, when her husband died, she got addicted to crack, you know what I mean? Because that was, it just infiltrated the, the all the big cities in America, especially New York City. So, and crack is cocaine, right? It's really fucked up how, how everything went down thanks to Biden and the Clintons and that, and Reagan too, Reagan. that whole era, because they criminalized the hell out of crack, but not cocaine. When crack was poor man's cocaine, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So for those who don't know, because people think that it's a different drug, right? People in the city can't afford cocaine, right? right? So what they did was somebody taught somebody how to take the <laughs> cocaine, mix it with water Chop and baking soda, stretch it out. It's called stretching it. So like, like when you pour and you grow up and you get the 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 um. The eggs, the the powdered eggs, yep. you can stretch it by yep. putting shit in it's water. Like ketchup. You put water in ketchup, yeah, you make you have extra, of ketchup right. go a long way. So right. you're essentially doing that with, with, with the cocaine um, to ha to make it cheaper, right? But then you inject it into your bloodstream, it just hits you harder. So it's a, I guess it's a, a better high, better, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It must be great, motherfuckers get addicted to it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but people were getting crimp, like put in prison for life for doing drugs. Mm -hmm. To themselves you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's crazy so i grew up in that era literally i call it the cocaine 80s and then i'm not even bullshitting you my house was like an epicenter of the epidemic in my community no bullshit. i lived it's in that crazy. house so we had jamaicans in our ba basement selling crack you know what i'm saying in new york city at this time like you have blocks like the sidewalks is all blocks and so you have the squares in in the lines of all the squares is crack vials. There's no empty space. Crack vials, right? Mm -hmm. Not in a little baggie. It was a like prof so professional. Yep. It's like, how did this shit get here? You know yep. what I'm saying? But it was, listen, I grew up in it. Um uh my mother, she ended up leaving New York because the house our house got raided and she dipped out. Um then I stayed with my grandparents in another part of Brooklyn and uh Canarsie. And that was it was a, a better, more more excuse me, family type environment. And they, you know, gave me a lot of love, a lot of um, you know, good teaching, good upbringing, and just love, love, love. That was a, the best part of my childhood, me and my grandparents. So I had education, I had sports, I had this criminal family, and then I had love. You know what I'm saying? So it was mm -hmm. a weird combination of things. So it, you know, I'm not the typical like dude, but my life has been very dynamic, you know what I'm saying? And it just made me who I am. So I've always been a free thinker. I always thought for myself. I've never been one to subscribe to an authoritative uh, regime in any capacity. Listen, if something don't make sense, I challenge it. Yeah. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. Just because y'all said it's the, the rule, I cool. don't care. It doesn't apply to me, yeah. you know what I mean? And I live like that, Yeah. you know? And I teach my kids the same. Yeah, how many kids you have? I got three kids. Three kids. Yeah, it's it's kind of a trip, man. The way you and I connected on social media, it's like I, you know, a lot of people are, you know, social media is bad and it's this and that and the other. But I met some of the coolest motherfuckers, business partners, mm -hmm. people, friends. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, but like, for sure. I grew up a lot of the the same way. Like my mom was Mormon, my dad mm -hmm. was Catholic, right? And uh, I grew up kind of in the the dual religion right. thing. And my dad took off when I was about thirteen years old. But right. like, I was always questioning stuff. I just yeah. remember from a young age, always mm -hmm. like. Not from a defiant way, like, no, right. fuck you, but it's like, what does this mean? Why? Yeah. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. my whole life has just been like this, wanting to know what's right. behind it. You tell me this. Are you, like, are you religious now? I'm very, very spiritual, mm -hmm. not religious at all. Okay. So, a number of years ago, you know, I grew up Catholic. I was Catholic for 16 years. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents split up. My mom was Mormon, dad was Catholic. Mm -hmm. So, me and my brother joined the Mormon church. Right. I think anybody that's an entrepreneur nowadays mm -hmm. that was our age, at some point in time, we sold drugs, right? Yeah. Like, it, part yeah. of my entrepreneurial that's deal was learn. learning yeah. how to that's freaking, how you, you know, you take yeah. a pound, you split right. it down disease, the court, the whole thing. Yeah. Like, everybody, sold, I sold weed mm -hmm. back in the day, got in trouble. Yeah. And then uh, when I was about 18, it was like, 
all my friends were hooligans. They were all, you know, troublemakers. And and the girl that I was dating at the time, which ended up being my my wife, mm. not my my first wife, right. um, was very religious. And okay. so I was like, you know what? I'm kind of over the whole troublemaker thing. I'm gonna right. try this God thing out. Yeah. So I joined the Mormon Church. Went mm. on a Mormon mission. Mm. Spent two years out there. Mm. And we sell stuff now. We sell products and things now. Right. Where I spent two years selling God, right. essentially going yeah. door to door. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, I just always remember it from a young age. Just always wanting to know why like being very mm. very very inquisitive right you know what i'm saying mm. and i feel like today that's one of the things lacking in our culture and our community is it's just like this is the what it what it is and yeah, everybody's like all right cool it. well yeah. he said it right. the guy said it the yeah. the law said it the government said yeah. it so this is what it is and i find it really intriguing being able to like connect with people that are just like yeah. oh, tell me why like i want it like yeah, but more than that like they go on their own journeys to figure shit out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and listen, this I, I, I love that. So you've been on your journey. Mm -hmm. I'm on my journey. And we, have, we all have friends yeah. doing the same thing, creating our own little ecosystems. Yeah. So you're the president of your world, mm -hmm. like me and mine. And so you see how, how easily guided people are, right? It's cool, but it's also alarming, right? Because I see how people could be guided easily on some uh, bullshit, easy. you know? And when we have our, this is what I love about your podcast, my podcast, social media, right? Levels the playing field, right? Prior to this this era, everything on TV was the gospel. Mm -hmm. But now people are seeing everything on TV is bullshit, right. you know? I don't fuck with nothing on any kind of media, yeah. nothing. It's entertainment to me. Yeah, I don't believe anything. I they take say. it as data. Yeah, I bring it into like my own world. Right, I chop it up how I want to chop mm -hmm. it up because I have my my own foundational principles. I right. think that's what's really interesting is like, you know, you you were raised the way you were raised, and I don't think you go back and change any of it, would you? No, nah, because you wouldn't, wouldn't be nah, who wouldn't. you are today. I wouldn't. Like one of my favorite quotes was uh, by the old. Uh, um, president of the Mormon Church, he said, you are who you are today because mm -hmm. the choices and decisions you made yesterday. Mm -hmm. So people always ask me, like, what do you regret? If you could go mm -hmm. back and change it, like, I wouldn't change anything because nah. all the heartache, all the crazy shit, yeah. my parents splitting up, my mom being a single mm -hmm. mom, like, she's my hero, mm -hmm. being a hustler, working the jobs, like, getting into fights when I was a kid. Like, yeah. that shit brought me to today and, like, mm -hmm. I, I consider myself the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Right. Like, you consider yourself yeah, the baddest sure, motherfucker on the planet, sure. right? Yeah. So it's like, if you go back and erase any of that, then you don't have you don't what you know have what today. You're be, yeah. But what I find interesting is how little people question anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. my whole philosophy with lions, not sheep isn't like, all right, go do this. This is what normal looks like. This yeah. is how you should all be. It's like, right. no, nah, dude, is it possible mm -hmm. that this is the way it is? Right. It's like the matrix, like red pill, yeah. blue pill. Like, yeah. He, you know, Morpheus doesn't say, "Hey, I'm going to show you how it is." Yeah. He's like, he gives, "I'm going to, I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to let you go through this door. Right. I'm going to give you the door to go through, and then mm. you get to learn jujitsu. You right. get to learn the shit. Right. You get to fucking get your ass kicked and question everything." And I feel like that's almost been demonized, like yeah. questioning no, shit. Yeah. Don't fucking question anybody. Say, Mom, dad, your friends, yeah, nobody. That's just look. Look how the school system is set up. Oh, right? totally. The conveyor belt you come, of sheep. You come in this classroom, you shut up. Yep. You sit in line. You sit in a, in a row. Yep. You ask to go to the bath. No, fuck that. <laughs> I listen. So my my children, I'm real close with. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot. I pour into them, right? And one time when we moved to where we're at now, the school that my son is in, Elijah, the teacher was having these weird complaints. I'm like, okay, let's let's. You know, he's slouching in his seat and da, 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 da. I'm like, why are you telling me these things? Yeah. Is he bored? Like, you know, cause look, you, we don't, our, the way that we do things in my house is school is at home. Mm -hmm. We go there just for some socialization or whatever. 100%. He, he's smarter than you, lady. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, I know this guy. He's not a bad kid. He's, yeah. a, he's an exceptional yeah. human being. Like, I'm inspired by him with how pure he is. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, the things that these teachers are care about and and complain about, I'm like, oh, really? This is fascinating. If you got to know him, you know he's probably one of your best students. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, he's slouchy. Like, yeah, like it was so bizarre when when we were sitting down having the conversation. Like like he kind of leaned his chair up. I was like, wow. Like I did that when I was a kid too. What does that mean? You know what like, I'm saying? Does that mean he's a bad person? Like yeah. does that bother you? It was just weird. So, but but nonetheless. We live in a society, bro, in which people at the highest uh, levels of uh, highest sectors of each uh, highest levels of each sector they want to keep people dumb, mm -hmm. 
humble, fat. quiet, fat, and yep. happy. You Broke. know what I'm saying? He's your stimulus check. Yeah. You know, don't question this, don't right. question that. And it started from a noble place. I'm gonna tell you what, what, what I mean by that. Let's go to a religion. I like you. I think you like history too. You're a I big love, I love history. fan of history as am I. Love history, bro. Yeah. And and I love like religion. It's fascinating. It right? is. And listen, essentially, religion. Every religion was created by a man. Mm-hmm. So every rule can come from a man, right? Uh, I want to talk touch on that a little bit later, but I have a theory. But anyway, re- religions it was the first rules of everything. Mm-hmm. It, it taught you about the universe. It taught you about everything, right? And human beings are the most dynamic animals on this planet. Savages, pure beasts, right? Because it is. <laughs> so you had to have some guidelines for a lot of motherfuckers, right? Yep. Because if not, it's all people like us would have everything. Like people would t- tell me, like, you should be a king. I'm like, nah, bro. Nah, you wouldn't eat. Yeah. You would have no resource. I would take everything. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how that's it's true. Real human people don't nature. Like to hear that shit though, real, but it's true. Yeah, real human nature is is the real rules to life, bro. Is is eat, sleep, procreate. The, is, the stay thing safe. that people don't that's realize. It. I don't want to interrupt, interrupt you. Guys. Yeah, I want you to yeah. keep going on this shit because this is mm-hmm. like this is what I wanted right, to talk right. about. This is where I knew we were going to go. Yeah. People don't realize how close that is to our generation, though. Yeah, for sure. It was literally two generations ago. We didn't have Mickey D's. You didn't have Uber Eats. If you didn't go hunt, physically, kill a beast, cut the beast open, bring the beast home, you didn't eat. Now, if you didn't do that, somebody else was. Now, if somebody else was providing the food, guess what you were? You were a slave. Or like, that's or, just how it's been. Or, or if you are not able to find some, and you see a weaker man who got take some, it. you're taking it. That, that people don't like to hear that. They don't want to hear that. But Anyways, it's real. keep going, bro. It's real. So the real rules is is this: the real rules of a human being is to procreate, mm-hmm. rest, eat, and find shelter. Right. That's it. So the most formidable, the most capable men are able to do that. Right. So we had to have rules. Or mo- I think it's good that we have rules. I think I would be fine if we didn't have rules. Right. But I'm glad that there's rules because, you know, I like our society kind of. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> but anyway, so you had to keep people in check because people are just not good, right? Even me, you know what I'm saying? Like if there wasn't rules, I'd probably be doing a lot of dumb shit, you know? If I, if I wouldn't go to jail for it or sure. whatever. So, but I think people go overboard with the shit and then they start abusing the shit like putting themselves in power or if they're in a position of power just really like ruling people with an iron Mm -hmm. fist or just manipulating people just to get more and more and more and people are greedy you know what i'm saying so we are disciplined people right we're both in our you in your 40s yeah we're both we're both in our 40s and we're fit right the average person in his 40s is the old man yeah you know what i mean so we're disciplined, disciplined people, so we don't indulge in excess pretty mm-hmm. much of anything, but most people do. They can't help themselves. And I don't even look at humans as bad for that. It's just, I get it. Yeah. Just like I was saying, crack must be great. That's why people are addicted to yeah. it. That's why I'm not fucking with it, you know what I'm saying? I, I do things to keep myself in a good space. I don't go places that might be dangerous for me. I don't go places where I might get into fights or anything. I don't go places where it's gonna tempt me to do something outside mm-hmm. of my character because I'm a, I'm a fallible person, sure. you know what I'm saying? You're so, human, man. I'm a human, So, but a lot of people don't have that kind of wherewithal mm-hmm. to keep themselves in alignment with whatever they feel like is their, their value system or whatever. A lot of people don't even have a value system, no. you know what I'm saying? So um, outside of whoever, what they've their, been told whoever their authority is. Or where is. they're in, like the box that they're living yeah. in. The culture, the tribe that they're mm-hmm. in right now, whether you're in the nerd tribe, whether you're mm-hmm. in the beast tribe, whether yeah. you're in the freaking that provides your rules. That's what it is. That's yeah. the game that you're playing. Those are the people that you follow. That's mm-hmm. the that's the that's the literal rule of law. Correct for you. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But I see things a little different. So I I I trust my mind. I trust my capabilities. So I'm my I'm my master. I'm yeah. my own master, right? And I'm the master in my family and my community. So we, they got I got them. I mm-hmm. got everybody. Um, I, I do love sitting in council with, with powerful people like yourself, and I only spend my time with people yeah. I admire, you know, and because I I love myself and I value my my energy and my time, so, and I I learn from you, I learn from Rob, I learn from all of the people that I, I fuck with, and that's just my life. Outside of that, there's some incredible people on this planet, and but 
the people that's just placed where they're at, yeah. I don't fuck with. Dude, it's, it's hard to, man. It. It's interesting you say that because, like, this is something that I'm 40. How old are you? 45. Yeah. I'm, I'm 44, and it's like the older I get, man, the more this conversation becomes real. Like, we could talk about money and chopping up business and the whole thing. But, like, when you start really looking at how we were raised, right? Mm -hmm. I take it all the way back. And this is something I talk about with Lions on Sheep all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, ever from the very, very, very early days, because you, you, did you go to public education plus private education, yeah, the whole yeah. thing? Regardless, mm -hmm. the rules were the same when you were a kid. Right. Ever since you were a baby, mm -hmm. this is what is good, this is what's bad. Right. If you do these things, you'll go to heaven. God mm -hmm. will like you. Mm -hmm. If you do these things, you're going to go to hell. Right. God's not going to like you, mm -hmm. right? And you're born, we're born literally into fear. Mm hmm yeah. Religion at its root fear. is fear. Yeah. They're really we talk love and compassion, but at the end of the day, if you fear. think about the primal reality of religion, mm -hmm. you're taught from a very young age to fear, fear going to hell. Yeah. Fear God, the mm -hmm. wrath of God. Right. You are nothing. The, right. You're a yeah. sinner. You're born yes. into sin. Yeah, bro. And so you start questioning people and you're like, I, I was meeting with a buddy the other day. And I was like, Well, what is sin? Mm -hmm. Like what is it? Like yeah. what does that? What does sin mean? Love these questions. Because yeah, dude, yeah. if you think about it, like if you go if you go places in the Middle East, mm -hmm. like we think murder, mm -hmm. murder's bad, right? Mm -hmm. You think of the word murder, mm -hmm. it's a sin, it's bad, yeah. it's against the law. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go to jail, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. But there are places in the Middle East where, the same way that you're raised to believe that murder is wrong, they are raised to believe from the from the womb that if you're able to kill a Christian, you'll go straight to heaven, mm -hmm. and they're they are literally born and raised to believe that that is like one of the most exalted things that you can do. See, but that's even a perversion of scripture though. So I'm a Muslim and I've lived in the Middle East. Yep. A lot of my family are out there like and are like scholarly about Islam. And that's a perversion of, right. of, of text, you know? But you have that, once again, what we have here, they have there. What we have here is a perversion of Christianity, 100%. the Bible. Um, the Creed of Nicaea. You bring a bunch of quote wise men together yeah. that said, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna write the Bible." Yeah. Well, dude, the they, they left out the the Septuagint. A lot. They left out the Apocrypha. All of these books that even, were never even, included because the they didn't books, like them. But even the books that's in there, I challenge the average person read it. Yeah, read it. Read all of them. Nobody books. reads these things, right. right? I read I read the Bible and the Quran multiple times, right? And I'm back in the Bible right now because as I get older, I have a better. Uh, uh, my engine works better, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm studying now. I'm looking at etymology of words, right? right. Adam, what does this mean? Right. Boom, Adama, mm, what does that mean? Dirt, right? Adam was never a person, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, but I, I but people are not reading their 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 scripture. Right. They're listening to whoever their leader is give his interpretation of scripture, right? And that's what's so that I just want to just on behalf of Islam, I don't want nobody thinking that. Anybody in this, any real Muslim believes that. Right. They don't. It's just, it's the same thing that's as Christianity. It's, right. it's, 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 it's forbidden. Uh, killing is not forbidden, right? But killing a Christian, like killing for bad reasons 100%. is not. Is, so you, what you have though is, is, is people over there manipulating people. You gotta understand like a lot of places, the most religious people on the planet are where people are not educated, right? So you grow up believing this book. If somebody say, yo, you're poor right. in, a, in a village, and your kids are a liability. They're expensive. That's why people don't want to have daughters, because their sons can help them make money. So, give me your son. I give you ten thousand dollars. Y'all are rich, and your son he gets to go and die for Allah. Go to jihad. He gets heaven. And you believe that? Mm -hmm. That's a good deal. I would do that if I grew up. You believing know what I'm saying? that, right? You, you can't the knock somebody. You can't knock somebody for believing it's the programming. that. It's the teachers that's manipulating right. these people, or the, these leaders, so-called leaders, manipulating people, and those leaders know better. Yeah. So they're going to get a way worse punishment. We have this the same thing that's happening here is happening there. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because we're sending our guys to war. Yep. For very unrighteous reasons. For, it's for we're not we are. Listen, I love America. This is my country. Mm -hmm. We're the baddest motherfuckers on the planet, <laughs> but we're the baddest motherfuckers by a long shot. Yeah. People think China is a threat, and they're not. Right. You know what I'm saying? People think that, oh, well, tech, they can, you don't think we know that they have a, yeah. a, a capacity of, uh, what is it called? Uh, fucking what our infrastructure and power grid. Oh, we are on top of it. Like, right. We're not stupid, right? So, but military wise, we're, we're stronger. Yeah. I, I look at, I read all of this shit. Mm -hmm. 
because I it was a concern to me at one point. I'm like, yo, we'll smash them, right? But we're so far ahead and we're war's a lot different now, but people are getting sent to war under false false pretenses and it's really fucked up because they really go in and believing. Mm-hmm. And these guys, I don't knock our, our guys, our warriors. I knock these politicians. Totally. Fuck these guys. You yeah. know what I mean? They're not leaders. They're just dudes with jobs. Right. Just like you call- But like, you have 330 something million people that are scared as fuck out of them. Right, why? Right. Because ever since they were a little baby, they've been programmed like, fear God, fear these things. The these, government knows yeah, what's best for you. The, the teachers, government. listen to the teachers. Mm-hmm. Like, don't ever question the teachers. Yeah. Don't ever, and if you ever did, like me, you know, I, when I got in trouble at school, I wasn't afraid of school. I was afraid when they were going to call my dad. Right. Because then when I get home, I get my it. ass beat, yeah, right? It. So it's like you knew you just didn't want to fuck around and get in right. trouble. So I, I, you, you, you want to question everything. Mm. But when you question everything, everybody's like, it's the same thing. Parents say, why? Because I'm, because I'm your dad. Because I know better, right? Yeah, that's why, bullshit. dad? Because I know better. I feel like, like, if if you, I'm gonna say this to the parents. If you tell your kids because I said so, <laughs> you don't love your child. Yeah. You don't. Listen. My kids are mad confident. I say that when my kids already know that I'm wrong yeah. and they know what's right. I'm like, right. just shut up and fucking keep going. <laughs> right, you know right. I know. Yeah, you know? Yeah. It's like it's like my kids challenge me yeah. and I answer them. Yeah. I want them to understand. I don't ever want my kids looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about yeah. or I don't care about them and making them do shit because I'm being mean or any of that. I'm patient with my kids, right? They taught me a lot of patience and I love them. So I And I, I want them to have a standard in life to where if they question something, they ask. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the, I, I, I'm very confident now, but I didn't have the confidence that they had because my parents didn't deal with me like that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very patient. I've never not once not thoroughly answered what they're asking, mm-hmm. one questioning me once I told them to do something. And even if you don't know, you go figure I'll it figure out. I figure it out. And yep. I tell them that, that I don't know, son. Let's look it up. Yeah. Let's look it up. Yeah. Let's find it out. So, you know, people got to like pour into their children, man, mm-hmm. because you asshole parents is making asshole kids. Yeah, totally. You're being so busy at work, and I get it, but you're, people are just sending their kids the most formidable, the most important years of their lives, giving them to people that they barely know mm-hmm. to teach them, Expecting to, them to, 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 to teach mold them their minds. Economics and capitalism and how to grow and how to overcome your fear and all of these other things. And it's like, that's your kid, man. And ethics. I'm the same way. Like I, I don't look at the public education system as the tool to my kid's success. I'm the tool to my kid's right. success. We we'll use that as a supplement. 100%. They, they, the, the public education system will teach them how to you know, count and mm-hmm. read and write mm-hmm. and things like this. Be but good like, workers. Like, I want my kids to deal with shit on the playground. Mm-hmm. I want my kids yeah. to face a bully. I want yeah. my kids to freaking deal with some, some mm-hmm. bullshit in school because yeah. that's what really forges you. You know what right. I mean? Correct. But I found that, like, kind of talking about the, the, the religion conversation, this is a fascinating thing for me. This mm-hmm. is, like, what I really like to, to yeah. talk about because what's interesting is how embedded people are in things that they don't actually truly believe. Yeah. And what I mean by this is like, you know, you ask a, a, a Catholic, mm-hmm. and, and this isn't a rule across the board, but the mm-hmm. majority of people, like, what is Catholicism? They can't really tell you. Mm-hmm. You ask a Mormon, you know, what is Mormonism? Mm-hmm. And they don't really know. And mm-hmm. what they know is what they'll recite from what they've heard right. or what they've been programmed to say. Right. And so for me, a number of years ago, when I, when I uh, after my divorce, I never went like, you know, fuck religion, mm-hmm. fuck church, whatever, yeah. whatever. I was like, I kind of stepped back into this space where I realized there's got to be more. Mm-hmm. If, if I think that there's just one book yeah. and that's the, the rule for 2,000 years ago and right. forever, yeah. it doesn't make sense to me because yeah. the book talks about asking you shall receive, knock, and it shall be opened unto mm-hmm. you. So the reality is like, am I trying to form a relationship with a church and with a guy or mm-hmm. with the guy? Mm-hmm. And so I started like really, really, really questioning what do I even believe? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you start looking at the Bible and you look at, you know, the the, the different um, people that have come before us. I mean, Jesus went out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm-hmm. What did he do? I don't know. Was he doing ayahuasca? Was he mushrooms? Who the fuck knows, right? Mm-hmm. Was he listening to podcasts? I mean, he we don't doing, know, but a lot of that he went on a journey, yeah. right? Yeah. And and so I, one of the things that I love about like what what you you believe and what you look at is like you're like i know what i know but i also know what i don't know yeah and what i don't know i want to know right and so you're kind of on this constant path Mm -hmm. of exploring and looking and asking and questioning and just constantly i'm i'm I'm, i say why at 44 more Mm -hmm. than i did when i was 10 years old right because i'm like what why is it that way what does that really mean and i feel like right now 
there's this really interesting thing happening in our culture across the board. You know what I mean? Whether you're gay, straight, black, white, rich, poor, of people starting to kind of go like, I don't know if this is the real game. Nah, like, true. you know, yeah. I'm, I'm 40, 45. I got the house. I got the car. I got the kids. Yeah. This is what I went through at 30 when yeah. I burned my world to the ground. Yeah. I was a self-made multimillionaire. Parents split up. No silver spoon. I was 31 years old. Like, I got the cars. I got the house. I got the boat, the whole fucking yeah. thing. But, like, why do I hate my life? And it's because I was living on this conveyor belt of, like, mm -hmm. here's what success looks like. Here's yeah. what being a dad looks like. Here's what being a husband looks right. like. And I literally burned my whole fucking world to the ground. Mm -hmm. And I spent two years what I call my wilderness going... Yeah. Like, what the fuck is he? Why am I even here on this rock? I There's this giant right. fucking rock floating through the cosmos. Why, are you here? why, are why you here? am I here? Why, right? I'm asking you, why you are asking you here? me why I'm here? Yeah. I'm here to live in this exact moment because mm -hmm. nothing else is real. Mm -hmm. if, I, if, I, if I gave you a billion dollars right now and said change yesterday, you can't. Mm -hmm. If I said, here's a billion dollars, Mike, change tomorrow, you can't. Mm -hmm. Now, you think you can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to help yeah. the communities and the things. But newsflash, you're dead by dinner. Mm -hmm. So it ain't a money game. Mm -hmm. If money isn't the game, what's the game? Mm -hmm. And and I found out about five years ago, I was teaching uh, my Lion's Den group, and I had this lady on the front row. And this is like what my quest has been literally for like the last eight years, nine years since right. I got my, went through my divorce. She started crying, and she's like, I'm struggling because I don't know my purpose. Mm -hmm. And, bro, you Google how to find your purpose. Mm -hmm. There's thousands of books. Mm -hmm. There's infinite courses and people will tell you how to find your purpose, right? right? And I started asking myself, like, why is Sean Whalen on this rock right here, right now? I don't right. believe in coincidence. I don't mm -hmm. believe there's an accident. There's a reason, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started looking at it and realizing that, like, I can't change yesterday. There's nothing that I can do. There's no guilt. There's no sorrow. There's no remorse. There's no apology that I can issue that will ever cure yesterday, change yesterday. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't exist. It's like it's done, mm -hmm. right? And the reality is that if if I knew that today's dinner was my last dinner, then tomorrow doesn't exist either. Mm -hmm. We think it does. We have five year plans and ten year yeah. plans and baller plans and this plan and I'm gonna get married plan. I'm gonna mm -hmm. b -b 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 all this other shit. But the reality is like I might be dead by dinner. So if I don't have control over either of these places, what's the one thing that I have complete control over? This exact moment that I'm living in right now. Right. And so as I started looking at that question, like why am I here? My purpose is to live in a singular moment. Mm -hmm. And I find when I'm depressed, I'm living in yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm stressed about yeah. yesterday, what I could have done, what I should have done, mm -hmm. what I would have done, all the sorries I got to say. Right. And when I find that I'm anxious as fuck, when I'm like mm -hmm. anxious, it's I'm worried about tomorrow. Right. And so when I find myself in either of those spaces, and yeah, I mean, you can talk about plant medicine helping and all this other shit. What I found is like, the only control that I have is over a singular moment. My thoughts, my words, my actions, my deeds, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm in that moment, that's when I find the most joy. Mm -hmm. That's when I find what I want to find. That's yeah. when I find truth, right? Yeah. And when I'm living outside of that. So the whole philosophy that I teach people is, is, is you know, I went into this wilderness questioning, why am I here? Mm -hmm. And I found what many prophets found before me when right. you know moses in the burning bush this bush starts talking to moses mm -hmm. and you pick up a stick and it turns into a snake you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying joseph smith went out into the woods and he's like all right god which church am i supposed to join god came down and talked to him it's like how is any of that any different than me and you because mm -hmm. isn't that the game like we're, we're trying yeah. to be like whatever you want to be jesus or this yeah. that so I, I started realizing like i have the ability to, to talk to god i have the ability to literally create my own fucking world mm -hmm. And so my entire game now is how do I, how do I live in perfection in a singular moment? Mm -hmm. And that's my entire like thesis of life. It's, it's how do I get deeper and deeper and deeper into a singular moment? So like when I'm having this conversation, nothing else exists. There is no other conversation. I mean, there's no dinner. Mm -hmm. there, there's no breakfast. Like the only thing happening in my world right now is this reality is this conversation right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like there's so many people that have been programmed that this is the path of success. This is where you should be at 45, 44. I mean, you could probably Google how much in assets should I have? And there's going to be like people telling you where you should be financially right, and where right. you should be emotionally yeah. and where you're, yeah. you're where you should be on the corporate ladder. And it's like, what the fuck does any of that even mean? Mm -hmm. You know what you, I'm saying? You just, you, man, you just said a lot, right? <laughs> it's some heavy shit. And think about this, the ascended masters, the Jesuses, the Muhammads, the Buddhas, whomever, right? 
in their time, let's say Jesus' time, mm-hmm. we're, right now we got what, eight billion people on the planet? Yeah. I don't even think it was a billion people back then, mm-hmm. right? So Jesus was very impactful and profound enough for people to carry out his message. You know what I mean? Um, now, just like with anything, things get, as, as time goes on and the population expands, things get saturated. It's more people doing everything, right. right? Like when I started YouTube 11, 12 years ago, man, it was easy. Yeah, it was like you and Gary Vaynerchuk. That yeah, was it. nobody, right? <laughs> but now it's mad millions of people, yeah. right? So, however, it's expanding, but it's staying the same. So let's say you're, you're Jesus for your people. Mm-hmm. You got thousands of people that tap into you right, right. now. Right. Right now, that's going to teach their kids about you, this, that, and a third. And the more organized and the more um, uh, the more that your message pervades their minds and, and their actions, it's just that's that's what they believe. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you have people coming to you crying. Oh, uh, every what day. You, what Same way you. Yeah. Every day. And that shit, it's it's like the same. We're we're microcosms of those greats, modern day, modern mm-hmm. times. You know what I mean? And it's not about my my way for everybody. No, mm-hmm. it's my way for the people that understand how I talk. J- just like Jesus. Correct. Like Jesus Correct. went, I mean, I watched a, 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 a post that you put up on Instagram where you talked about this exact same thing where you're like generations from now. My mm-hmm. grandkids, grandkids, grandkids are mm-hmm. going to watch the shit and be like, yo, that dude was dope as right, fuck, right? Right, that, right? That dude was a beast. Yeah. And, and I think about it and like, this has been a really interesting thing for me. It's been challenging too because it challenges everything I was raised to believe. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I was raised to believe in, in, in Catholicism and Christendom and, and Jesus coming in the garden of Gethsemane. And he took upon me, took upon himself, my sins and your sins and the whole world's sins. Mm-hmm. And then he died and he was on the cross. And because of that, then I can live forever and, right. and all this other stuff. And that's what I was programmed to believe since an early age. But think about this. The people that taught you, your parents, whomever, you love them, of course. Right. Like I love my parents, but I, this is how I, this is when I say the winners in life. Yeah. The billionaires, those are the winners, right? Millionaires, billionaires, whatever, on a on a surface level. Sure. Right. From it's, a money game. It's a lot more to that, but that's major because everybody's scrambling for resources, right? Now, I'm sure you like me, I'm wildly more successful. I take care of my parents. Right. Me too. So I figured out things a little they gave me what I needed mm-hmm. mentally. To, to, to get to where I'm at. Yep. So we know a little bit more than they did at that time, right? We are a little bit more intellectually capable. So we understand, okay, you gave me what you knew, but this is the reality. I, I've come to understand that. And our kids are gonna school us. Mm-hmm. They should. Yeah. If, if they don't, we didn't do a good job. You totally. know what I mean? So And we should want that too. I, I, I can't wait. You bro. should want I that. I cannot wait. You know what I mean? I can't wait. Look, I told my son, um, I took a, a heroic journey with uh, LSD, yep, and um, I dealt with my demons. It was it was a transformative day, probably the best day of my life, Hell yeah. right? And the last thing for me to do that day was just I call him up. He never seen me cry, right? <laughs> I'm in a t- bathtub, right? Cause that's like my <laughs> that's my sanctuary, you know, my my I, safety you spot. I take a bath every night. I'm yeah. in the same place. Like this is my gym. I yeah. tell my wife, I'm like, this, yeah, this well, is my spot. Yeah, I got my little nobody pillow. can fuck with me. I got my my bath pillow yeah. and shit. My so, candles are all lit. And yeah, stuff. bro. So he comes yeah. up. I'm like, we just talking, we rapping, and and people think LZ is all crazy. You you can't even tell I'm on it if I'm on it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I'm talking to him, and I'm over like I'm full of like joy and love, right? And I'm like, son, when I die, you want the house? Like, say, if I die soon, you want the house? No, no, no. I said, when you're 18 or whatever, you want you want the house? Like, of course. I'm like, I don't want to give you my house. He looked at me perplexed. And I said, if I had to give you my house, then I didn't do a good job. I said, son, oh, your house should bro. be killing my, like, my little measly house. <laughs> we should be giving my house, this house, to somebody that needed. it. You shouldn't need anything yeah. from me. My plan for you is for you to not need me. I don't want you to need me by 18, you know what I mean? He's 17 right now, yep. and we're working on it. Preach, so man, preach. That's, that's, and he got it, you know yep. what I'm saying? He's he just glimmering in his eyes. I pour everything I got yeah. into to him, and my and, and for my daughters, I'm just with them, mm-hmm. because I'm gonna be, they're gonna be my responsibility to like hand them off to their husband, yeah. who I'm gonna pick, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like up. old school, right? Yeah, bro, you know it I'm works, saying? old school works. I know. My family, that's how all the marriages 
are arranged Dude. and they work. Yeah. And nobody's Now people are going to trip about this and be like, what the fuck I, are you guys talking about? Care. You don't get it. I don't like, care. It's okay. I set the bar so fucking high for yeah. my daughter that she, I, I'll never forget this as long as I live. She went to a school dance and she came home and she was tripping. This was like her junior year of high school. Right. She, she, I could just tell she wasn't. I said, baby, what's up? She's like, that sucked. I said, why? And she's like, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to say anything bad, yeah. but he never even opened up a single door for me. I'm like, that motherfucker. But yeah. inside, I'm like, see? Yeah, she knows you know what better, I mean? Yeah. But dude, I, people people ask me all the time, and I've, I've been fascinated with this, mm -hmm. and, and literally what you're saying is exactly right. what I believe in. Like, so what what is your legacy? We talk mm -hmm. about legacy. Yeah. You know, you talk about legacy. I talk about legacy. Like, we have this idea, the legacy is this, I'm going to leave my kids this grand fortune, and Shaq says it best. Shaq's like, when his kids are like, we're rich, he's like, no, we, we ain't rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. Right. I'm rich. Exactly. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But like, I think about legacy, and the worst thing that I can fucking do is leave my kids a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. What I, what my legacy will be, and you'll know if I played the game right, is that I empower my five children to be the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. Mm -hmm. Like, when I die, I want them to be like, shit, man, we got to chop up dad's stuff. Like, I want them to be like, yo, just right. give it all to charity because yeah. they got their own yeah. shit. Or just I don't care about dad's just, millions. Yeah. Like, I yeah. want my, I, I create my own right. millions. Right. And I think, like, that philosophy, like, what you're talking about is so foreign to so many fucking people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because of this programming and the conditioning mm -hmm. and, and how it is that we're supposed to be right. going right. about this whole thing. But, like, a lot of people are terrified of being a parent mm -hmm. nowadays. And I'm not. I don't. Uh, no, I don't think you are. I, I want more children. It, people are. Most people. A lot of people are not qualified to be parents. See, that's that's the so, game. It's like so. All right. So I've lived. I live my truth, right? And you know, I'm in a beautiful monogamous relationship right now. But I was in a polygamous relationship, and people were like, "How? What? Why?" And when I explained to them like this, look. <sighs> Men of certain stature deserve multiple, they deserve to spread their seed. Men who are not, who have not a, amounted to anything in life, they don't deserve to have children. You don't deserve a woman, like it's a fact. Ultimately, men and women, we come together for, you know, a lifelong partnership, but the real reason is to procreate, mm -hmm. right? Is to uh, pass on our DNA, our genes, right? To populate the earth. Why should a man who can't provide a safe space for a woman to thrive as a mother, why should he have a child? He shouldn't, he doesn't deserve to. And we all know there's many a men like that oh, yeah. because there's many single mothers raising children oh, yeah, and it's, it's bad. Look, uh, um, my my daughter's mother showed me this statistic that they, they, they calculated single family households, both family households. Okay, single family with just a mother, both family, uh, mother, father, mother, father, and single family with just, uh, or single parent, I'm sorry, with just a father. Both parents and the father, kids were the same. With the mother, it was just bad. Yeah. The 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 increase of like jail and this and that was crazy, it was yeah. over the top. And people might get mad at that, but it's a real fact. It's, true. it's statistics. So fathers are needed. Men are needed in these children's lives, right? So why should a man who don't, provide anything, can't provide anything, wisdom, education, uh, leadership. leadership. Why should he be having access to women and kids yeah. and making kids? It's fucked up. You're, you're creating burdens on society. Right. They're not gonna be productive, you know what yeah. I mean? So, um, <clears throat> so that's that. Like, we gotta, like I talk a lot about masculinity and I take it a step further and I talk about the divine masculine, right? Masculinity is very basic. It's just characteristics resembling a man or a boy. But that divine masculinity is being tapped into like that God energy, that God frequency, right? And for me is love, right? And all of the characteristics of love, truth, you know, honesty, compassion, empathy, uh, duty, you know, all of these things, right? Because when you love, like there's nothing more powerful than love. You're a father. Mm -hmm. You do anything for your children. True. Like I would. So, and I would die a slow, painful death with my kids mm -hmm. with a smile on my face. Yeah. So that's love. So you can't tell me love is not the strongest fabric in the universe. So with that, I have to figure out all of the things that I have to do to be an effective leader in my household and to raise my children properly and to be a good neighbor to my neighbors, a good friend of my friends. Just a good person in society. 
and it takes a lot of work. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's because certain people, like, look, I'm not perfect. I have, you know, I've had anger issues. I grew up in a very violent, aggressive lifestyle. So I have to constantly work at being a, a chill person, work on meditation, keeping real good people around me who would look down on me if I snapped. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's a lot of work. But that's being that divine masculine and understanding what my role is. So for me, my purpose is this, to raise my children to be good people in society, strong. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's it. And I and I create my purpose, right? I'm saying what my purpose is. Yeah. This is what I think it yeah. is. And is to marry a beautiful woman to give her my name. So when my great, great grandkids look up our genealogy, mm -hmm. they can map everything out. Like I look up my family's genealogy, right? I trace my shit back far as I can. And it's all through records, you know what I mean? So these things have to be in place. And I just so happen to be the first person in my family to really create something, yeah. you know? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm proud of that. So I wanna represent it properly. Yeah. Want my kids to be set up right, my woman to be set up right, because hopefully I die before her. You know what I'm saying? And everything to be good. Like I well, I spoke yesterday and I told them the crowd, I said, Look, this is how this is this is all I care about in life. Yeah. I care about the day that I die. For that to be at home, comfortable, in my bed or in my favorite chair, my wife there and my kids, everybody hanging out, giving me love, mm -hmm. giving me an easy transition up out of here. Nobody's stressed out, nobody worried about nothing. Excited, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, he did it. Yeah. Cause that's how it was when my grandfather died. Right. It was like, see ya. Your grandpa killed yeah. it. Yeah. He did that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't cry at my grandfather's funeral, and me and him was like this. Yeah. I was like, why can't I cry? <laughs> but as I got older, I understood because there's nothing to be sad about. Yeah. You know, death is not sad. You're gonna miss them. That's sure. it. But that's gonna go away. Yeah. But I have so much gratitude for the things that my grandfather taught me. And the life, he's my my hero. Yeah. Him and my father. Yeah. So, um, so that's that's what life is for me. And what I'm doing now is is certain transitions I'm making in my career because I want to be. I'm in a different phase of my life, right? To where, like, I got rid of all my cars. Right? I don't even have a car. I got I have like nine cars in my Turo business, and I drive one of them whenever, mm -hmm. right? I don't even care, right? And I like cars, yeah. but it's not even a big deal to me no more. Because it's a lot of money for just for fun, yeah. for my, my enjoyment, which is not productive. So I did that recently. Like I just got rid of my last car a week, no, three weeks ago. I got rid of the Maybach, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I got rid of the lamp, everything, right? And I don't even care, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but I have, it's not like I can't get what I want, sure. but I can. But where I'm at now is like setting up my death. And I know that sounds morbid, but it's, it's not. not, dude. I it's think a about lot, my death all the time. There's a man. lot with that, right? Yeah. So I'll tell you, so <clears throat> I want to be helpful to people. I want to be, I am a servant. I look at myself as a servant, right? And, and this is the only thing that I'm humble with. I'm not a humble person, but I'm humble in a in a sense of like, I know that I could get, like any, uh, life is fragile. Second, so, yeah. so let me not be too, oh, I'm the guy. I'm a servant, yeah. you know what I mean? And I want to serve people. And how I see the best way I can serve people is teaching men about real masculine characteristics and 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 ethics, like a divine masculine. Actually, I was fortunate enough to have a rites of passage as a young man. I had my grandfather, I had my father. They put me in boxing. Um, I lived in a rough neighborhood. I got in fights. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I had mm -hmm. hard school. I had all these different things to escalate and to beef me up to be a man, right? And a lot of guys don't, and it's not their faults, right? And a lot of guys are on some, some bitch ass shit, it's a <laughs> pussy society, bro. But they don't know. Yeah. So guys like us can teach them, right? And I, I have workshops I'm putting together. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm doing one in Miami in, in March, and it's called uh, the Dangerous Gentleman's Academy, uh, Rites of Passage of the Modern Man, right? And I tell people to stay dangerous, and people think I'm, I'm talking about violent, no, nah, I think it's ideal for you to be uh, uh You gotta be able to handle yourself violently, with violence. period, straight up. Because other people can. Yeah, 100%. But dangerous is this mind, right? Dangerous is 
a person, a man that can properly articulate his thoughts right. with no concern about any kind of uh, uh, repercussions yep. because he's honest and he's he's trying to, his best to be a civilized, righteous man. So I could spit and say whatever to whomever and I'm not worried about anything. Sure. You know, so I don't walk this earth. I'm dangerous because I don't walk this work earth worrying about karma. I don't do anything to get anything negative back to me. Right. So a, a lot of people, like the status quo don't like that. They fear people like us. They they marginalize us. They ban us from social, wherever, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Tupac had a, a, a poem called The Rose That Grew From Concrete, right? And he talked about like concrete on this earth, but you know, a little grass or whatever will grow through that shit and a rose will blossom. You cannot hold down a suppressed <clears throat> reality and the truth. The truth is real, right? I've been in situations before where people try to throw my name under the bus, make me look bad. I was so angry and wanted to hurt these people, but I had to like step back, let them do them. And every time when the dust settles, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Thriving, still in, and they're gone. 100%. You know what I'm saying? So, I have total faith in the truth. So, as long as I'm standing on the side of what's right and what's the truth, I'm good. Yeah. And I'm not. I don't have an ego to where, if I'm not right, I won't accept the truth. I I want to you want it. I want it. Yeah. Correct me. You right. Know? I was telling baby girl like, yo, I'm always right, <laughs> and that sounds crazy, right? <laughs> but it's not because. I'm not jumping out the window on something I'm not sure. Sure. I'm going to wait. You know what's I'm funny, a man? Like, is that, he, he's always right, right? Even when he's not right, he's right. That's what I tell my wife. I'm like, I'm, I'm always right. But even, even when I'm not right, I'm right. It's funny, man. Like, this is the shit that, like, this is the shit I vibe with because it's so different than yeah. how we were raised and how we've been mm -hmm. programmed. It's so sure. different from religion. It's yeah. so different. Like, when you start talking about divinity, you know, like, it, it's such a weird conversation and difficult conversation for people to wrap their head around. Number one, because like everybody's just fucking with all the the low hanging fruit and the mm -hmm. bullshit and the mm -hmm. smut peddled every day yeah. from Fox and ABC and yeah. NBC and you know, you spend enough time on Instagram, it will make you fucking dumb. Right. It'll just make you dumb, <laughs> right? Mean, yeah, you watch yeah. the news, it'll make you fucking dumber. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, James Allen wrote my favorite book, As a Man Think, and he talks about the mind is a garden, mm -hmm. and he's like, it's gonna grow shit. One of two things: if you don't, if, you, if you've ever grown a real garden, you don't do nothing. If you do nothing to it, it mm -hmm. weeds will grow. come up. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It's going to grow weeds. Like right. it doesn't matter. You got to tame that shit. Right. You want fruit? You've got to plant seeds and nourish mm -hmm. the trees and all thing. But like, it's fascinating that you're talking about this because, like, my wife will tell you, she's walking by, like, you know, the whole conversation on divinity. Mm -hmm. You know, we we have been led to believe that we are nothing. Like we're the dust, of the, you know what I yeah, mean? Like yeah, you're just this yeah, man, you're yeah. this you're this ego, arrogant, you know, uh, uh, egotistical, yeah. uh, not humble shit. And dude, I struggled with that for so fucking long to the point where at 31 years old, I almost killed myself. Mm. I, I literally had built this world that I had been told was good. You know, I had the house, I had the cars, I had the things, I had the wife, the white picket fence for all intents and purposes. And like inside it felt like i was fucking dying right i'm like i don't like any of this like i appreciate like you said mm -hmm. the cars and the mm -hmm. shit and the whole thing my friends come to town I'm like yeah just take the lambo and they're like mm -hmm. what are you talking about i'm like i don't f it's just a car man yeah. i don't f yeah. you know what i'm saying it, it's just say, a car i, I don't fucking thing. care yeah, like it. what are you yeah. talking about I'm like yeah. don't break it just mm -hmm. take it you right. know but like i've been on this this thing and i and i feel like this is hearing you talk about this shit mm -hmm. is i think why you know, we're, we we yeah. connected and the universe is collide because literally yeah. this is this is the game to me. Yeah. Like, it's so difficult for a man to step outside of what he fucking believes and to question it all. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you got to strip yourself down to just being completely f fucking naked. Mm -hmm. Like from a primal stance, like mm -hmm. as we were little kids, one of our nightmares that we always had when we were a little kid, like every little kid had the nightmare that he's standing up in front of the class naked, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have this nightmare, like you show up to class and you're just standing there naked and all the right. kids are laughing at you yeah. and shit and da-da-da. The shame, the shame yeah. and the fear. And so we just 
we 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 fucking crawl up and ball up and like mm -hmm. I'm just alpha is this shit, right? Yeah. And you and I both know that ain't alpha. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the alpha is being able to dance with my daughter in the kitchen and Facts. punch a motherfucker in the face. Facts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That the alpha is being able to mm -hmm. fuck my woman and make right. love to my woman. The right. alpha is being able to like go fucking hunt and kill mm -hmm. and carry the beast home right. and to be able to snuggle my babies. Like right. that is the alpha. Right. But like right. I'm finding that that the conversations that are really terrifying to most men is stepping outside of what they think they believe and mm -hmm. questioning who they really fucking are. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about like the purpose, like, mm -hmm. you know, you can set up your death, but you and I both know chances of you and I like being at home, mm -hmm. chilling in our blanket, mm -hmm. everything's cold. It ain't going to happen that way. I'm going to mm -hmm. slam my race car into a wall <laughs> doing 160 miles an hour. Right. We're going to be out skydiving, yeah. doing some wild <laughs> shit, blowing shit up on the ranch, right? right? right. And it's be like, oh, that he checked out today, yeah. right? I hope it, it ends up that yeah, way, yeah. you know? But I'm really, really, really fascinated by this because I truly believe that we're in a day and age when the most gangster thing you can do is question yourself. Right. And question why you believe what you believe. Mm -hmm. Question, like, when you talk to the divine masculine, mm -hmm. look, if you got a dick, you're a man. It is what it is. Cool, right? But mm -hmm. are you a man? Like, what yeah. does that even mean? You're a male. And, right. You, yeah. have the, you have the genes and the things and what we right. believe, right? right? And fuck all that other shit. Like, whatever. <laughs> but, like, when you talk about divinity, like, being able to elevate your mindset to know that you're a creator, to know mm -hmm. that you are a god mm -hmm. amongst gods. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I don't look at myself any other mm -hmm. way. Like, mm -hmm. This is my world. Like, you're living yeah. in my world. Yeah. And I bet you'd probably say the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm living in your world. You right. created this moment. Right. You created the reality that mm -hmm. you have right now. Mm -hmm. Now, most people say, well, that's not humble and God, and you got to bow down, and you got all this other stuff. It's cool. Believe what you want to believe. But I don't believe that, that you and I are here and the 8 billion people are here to just come into the world, kicking and screaming, get a job, work on this conveyor belt, and then just fucking roll over and die. Like oh, when you no, start elevating no. the mindset and dude, I've done ayahuasca and I'm very much a, right. a believer in, you know, when Jesus went off into the wilderness, I'm pretty sure he was like, he had the best rooms. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I'd like to believe that listen, shit. Moses, you know what I mean? Moses was talking to a burning yeah. acacia bush, <laughs> which is ripe in DMT. Of no, course he was talking to God. You know what you I feel but, me? but this is what's crazy. People are like, well, well, this is what I love about the religion conversations. People always mock me because I was Mormon for a, a long time, and I believe the Book of Mormon is just as fucking dope as the Bhagavad Gita, as mm -hmm. the Quran, as the as the as the Bible, right? Or this young kid went out into the into the woods and started talking to God, and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, but you believe a book where a dude lived in a in a whale for a couple of days, right? And a dude split the ocean and a whole fucking army walked yeah, through it, right? I mean, so yeah, which is which is we, right and which is wrong, we, right? Yeah, what are we sticking with? Like, what's, but, yeah. But this is where I'm fucking fascinated and what you're doing, dude, I love because I feel like in my own way, I'm doing the same thing and it's hard for a lot of people to understand it. It's hard for a lot of people to understand your words. Mm -hmm. It's hard for men to understand what the fuck we're even talking about right, right now. Right. It's hard for, for men to understand what you're doing with yeah. your boys and what I'm yeah. doing with my boys to understand that like, I don't give a fuck what the game is. I don't mm -hmm. care what your game is and mm -hmm. what the school has said and what they have said. I don't care what the books have said. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm talking to God and I'm communing with God, that is revelation. Mm -hmm. Like you're writing books that 2,000 years from now are going to be read like we're reading books from 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Yeah. That's why I believe we're here. And we're, we're immortalizing ourselves as we speak by talking into this technology right. that people can hit play and watch us in a hundred two thousand years. years ago they had scrolls and papyra mm -hmm. and, and and feathers and, and, and hear and me and you are with cell phones and, and listen, fucking microphones and we're trusting people's interpretation mm -hmm. of of dialects that don't even exist anymore 100 percent. you know what i mean so just like 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 i said read these books read right. the bible when people it's like okay read moses talking to the burning bush yeah it's clearly saying he's high on DMT. It, it, it says acacia bush. Yeah. Anybody Google acacia, it's ripe with DMT. <laughs> yeah, but, so but don't course, do drugs, kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? Of course he's... Just then maybe no. we should stop calling these things drugs. Yeah. It's medicine. It's you medicine. Know what I'm so, so here's the thing. I call it sacrament now. I, now, I we, actually we could, can't... We could keep drugs because I don't want to... I don't like how people hijack these words. I see people call it, people call it plant medicine. Uh -huh. I don't like it, mm -hmm. and we everybody knows what they we're try talking to about. like make it. It's more. sacrament to me because, mm -hmm. dude, it's the most divine shit out there. Mm -hmm. Like when you can commune at, at a deeper level and mm -hmm. a more open level. I don't right. care what that is, whether right. it's meditation, whether yeah. it's psilocybin, whatever, whatever. To mm -hmm. me, it's sacrament. 
But like the whole elevation, I think is what I think is one of the greatest challenges because you and I both know that anybody can go to the gym and get swole. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard to make money right now. Yeah. But the number one thing, like the biggest advocate for us, but also the biggest enemy that we have is our own fucking mind. Mm -hmm. It's the programming. Right. You know what I mean? Like I always tell people, like I could take a phone and push a couple buttons and wipe everything off my phone. Mm -hmm. I can hit a reset button on my computer and take all of it off, but I can't fucking do that with this. Right. So this is where like what you're doing, you know, in your movement and my movement and, and all these guys that are kind of on this quest, it's like. Who do I have to become to start reprogramming this thing? Mm -hmm. Who do I have to become to start questioning everything and establishing my own belief right. system? Who do I have to become to look at my family and say, yeah, mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, and blah, 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 they all did it this way. But, right. you know, Ed Milet talks about being the one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's like, because I'm the first millionaire in my family. Mm, same. I, yeah. I'm I'm the first dude that, mm. like, it, it, I'm not a fucking, you know, uh, an alcoholic. Mm. Alcoholism runs in my family. We're mm. Irish. That's what we do. We fight yeah. and we fucking drink. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I'm the one that is recharting, rewriting mm. the book right. yeah. of my life, of yeah. our life. And so and as they look big back. responsibility. And that divinity, man, I think is really, really, really powerful and something I've loved watching you talk about. Um, because it's something I believe in heavily. Yeah. And and when you can elevate yourself to understanding that, yeah, Jesus was here and Moses was here. and But this is where I'm at. Yeah. And people got to understand this, too. I'm rough around the edges. As am I. As it was Jesus. Look, right. Jesus flipped over the tables, right? Everybody thinks that. Jesus was They don't this, realize that. He was knitting quilts and shit. They don't realize shit. that. Jesus' woman used to be a prostitute. Jesus' crew used to be killers and thieves. Dude, Saul. Reformed who men. Who was Paul. He used to fucking stone Christians. Yeah. He would get, listen, beat the fuck out of people. Listen, life is about, here's the thing. Like, I have a very colorful past. Mm -hmm. I didn't succumb to it. Most cool people do. I, you're right. <laughs> I grew yeah. out of it. So yeah. I have so much texture and context yeah. in which I could counsel people. Right. I'm qualified to counsel people going through shit because I know what it's like. I've what been, qualifies you? People mm -hmm. say the same thing. What calls me, qualifies me? Life. Mm -hmm. Life qualifies me. Yeah. Life qualifies yeah. you. You don't need yeah. a fucking a PhD and a piece, right. piece of paper that says right. somebody says you're qualified. You're fucking qualified because yeah. you did the shit. I sit in meetings with people with hundreds of millions of dollars, right? And I'm just like, they everyone postures themselves mm -hmm. up. I'm like, bro, I fought the government and won. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was rich, became homeless, and became rich again. Now I was rich illegally, lost it all, and became rich legally from being homeless, bro. Mm -hmm. As a fugitive, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, so, so I I feel like I have so much wealth, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe not monetarily wealth. I'm wealthy compared to most, but you know I'm around people that's doing way better than me. Oh, I yeah. like that. Same thing. So it's like, all right, I might not be on y'all level yet, but I'm wealth with experience, right? And I'm wealth with fortitude. Cause I don't think you could be homeless and handle that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. When I was homeless and when I was coming back up, nobody. It seemed like I was normal. Yeah, because that's that's me. Like I'm not gonna let nobody know I'm wounded. You yeah. know what I mean? Literally, I remember after my after my last fight, I went to keep rolling, keep fighting, right? And I broke my foot on a trail run, piss, right? So they gave me the boot. And I was living in Arizona. I had to come to California like once a month just for business. I came, I, I would come without my boots so nobody could see me like injured. Yeah. Cause fuck that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then you have now, you have people saying like, oh, men need to be vulnerable and show you, like no thanks. Yeah. I'm not vulnerable at all, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't I'm, think so? Nah, bro. What? Now, I, listen, okay, I bet okay. You, I disagree. No, 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 all and right. I, let, I know, let's, and I know what I know through social media, yeah. but even this conversation, okay. I disagree. Okay, different types of vulnerability, all right? right? I'm not vulnerable for any kind of attack. Sure. I'm not putting myself out there like that. And you know, it is what it is. My life, you know, coming from the streets, bro, like I've been in some fucked up situations to where I'm always head on a swivel. I'm a, I feel like even though my life is so good, yeah. I feel like some old shit might pop up. Some so I'm always alert on that level. So I can't let people see me damaged. Sure. You know what I mean? And I don't put that out there like that because I feel like when you start, oh yeah, my leg and my this, and then more pain start coming to you. You start uh, attracting that. Now, I can be vulnerable in truth, right? Like expressing things that matters of the heart, matters of the mind, things like that. 
I'm I'm open and honest about my story and right. my life. I guess if that's considered vulnerability, then yeah, cool. But me as a man, is I'm I'm solid. Yeah. Nobody knows if I'm injured or not. I ain't gonna show it. You know right. what I'm saying? So and when I am injured, I had surgery. Two I years show ago. it. I had surgery I two weeks ago, I and I still like I'm pulling look, my shirt. But you look, you're normal. Like, you're I'm normal. Still packing heat. <laughs> you're normal. Look, I, I I tore this right, getting ready for a yeah, fight, yeah. and it's sparring. They patch me up. I'm in the gym the next day. Yeah. With the thing on, doing my shit, I'm, I'm hitting mitts with one hand, like just let the motherfucker know, like yo, I will get yeah, you a yeah. one. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, so, so for that, yeah. But what, with my, I was like, yo, I ain't showing that shit because that shit was like, yeah, it really like. It. I, have you ever had feet injury? No, I broke my both my oh, freaking that shit sucks, yeah. Bro. It's so important. Shoulder. I, I just had shoulder surgery three weeks ago, man. That you shit seem, fucking you seem normal. sucks. You yeah. Normal though. That's See, good. I'm not trying to. Yeah. Showing everybody I mean fucked up, you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's because I carry around a freaking firearm. You know that, what I mean? Hey, same, bro. Same. No, but you, I think you're, I, I think you. And again, this is the interpretation of words, right? right? right. What does it really mean? What does it mean? Because right. you and I, we're like, we, I was raised kind of the same way, yeah. and not the exact same, right? Yeah. But like, I grew up fucking Somewhere. fighting. You know yeah. what I mean? Me and my little neighbor friend, we'd be out mm -hmm. scrapping in the middle of the street, yeah. and both of our dads were standing there watching, like, right. "Yo, handle your shit." This yeah. is how I was yeah. raised, right? Yeah. Yeah. So today, it's the same. It's mm -hmm. the same thing, right? But I think that level of vulnerability, I think you're ridiculously vulnerable, but in a very powerful way. Right. And maybe ridiculous isn't the right word, but radically powerful. In I believe vulnerability is a superpower. Mm -hmm. Debbie Ford talks about in The Dark Side of the Light Chasers, mm -hmm. one of my favorite books, how vulnerability is a superpower. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is like, like when you can, you said this last night standing around the fire, right? When you mm -hmm. can talk about the past, when you mm -hmm. can talk about being in the clink, when you can mm -hmm. talk about selling drugs and you can talk about the fear and you can talk about the depression and you can talk about mom mm -hmm. doing drugs and mm -hmm. you can talk about that shit. Most motherfuckers don't. Mm -hmm. But like that openness that nakedness yeah it's kind of like i always tell people look people are terrified of right. telling their truth of speaking right. their truth but i'm like you only have to stand in front of the class one time naked right and then you don't fear it anymore yeah because yeah. then all of a sudden you did it so to me like the entire game like when you talk about that divine masculinity yeah. and that thing yeah sharpen your fucking sword yeah. be ready to kill a motherfucker 24 yeah. 7 like i have a plan literally when we walk she'll tell you we walk into a restaurant mm -hmm. i know every fucking person sitting around me i can yeah. tell you where every exit is i can tell you which dude mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to shoot and which dude i can kill with a butter knife mm -hmm. am i lying like this is how i roll yeah. right just straight I up love it. survival i'd be thinking i'm the only one that think like that no that's yeah, just how like, i operate I, look, I i have to teach her a lot of things too it's like, like we do the same thing i we gotta train. sit in this side you yep. sit in this side I'm coming in the house first. Yep. You know, all of that shit. Yeah, so, we, yeah, if we walk into a restaurant with my kids, it's the funniest thing because they'll all like, we go out, walk up to a table and you see my kids, they're all looking around. Yeah. They're like, all right, dad's going to sit because I always sit in yeah. the same spot, yeah. whatever. But the thing about like this divine masculine, and I really think the real powerful men, mm -hmm. and call that whatever you want. You can mm -hmm. judge it by money. You can judge it by this. But I feel like the true essence of, of life is, is the ultimate freedom. Mm -hmm. It's us being free. Yeah. Emotionally, psychologically, mm -hmm. physically, mm -hmm. spiritually, right? Mm -hmm. And that aspect of vulnerability, like being a superpower, it's kind of like if if my if I'm naked standing up here, you can't make fun of me because you already seen it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You already know what I'm playing with. And I so, if you know the stories, if you know the fears, if you know that. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the ultimate essence of let power. Me, let me do something. You know what I'm saying? Let me pull up. I think maybe I don't understand what vulnerability means, right? Because I, I think I have a different we're re, understanding. We're redefining the Vol dictionary now. People are going to rip off, rip into this podcast and be like, yo, these guys are redefining <laughs> words and shit, you, okay. you know? All right. Sus suspect, susceptible to physical or emotional attack or harm of, of a person in need of a special care, support, or protection because of age, disability, risk of abuse um, of a... Then it's bridge of a partnership liable to higher penalties either. That, so I, I like, think I was right. The word vulnerable, I, I think yeah, that's the, like physical. You I think, think of physical. Nah, but even emotional. I yeah. think the right word is freedom. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, I'm a free. We're free. Like free men. I th yeah, exactly. The word vulnerable, I think, is being used kind of loose, right? Because right? vulnerable it, it means is is open to attack. Yeah, physically or emotionally, right? Yeah. So. And I, I fortify myself mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, right. spiritually to not be vulnerable. So I think we're thinking of it in this, like, just like we use humble wrong. Sure. People totally. People think humble is, is good. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Or you're driving a Lambo. You can't be humble. All you're making money, you got change. You can't be humble. You listen, got what? Listen, no, no, no. Humble means to lower one's own 
uh, self estimation is to, to 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 go beneath. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not humble. Right. I'm not humble. I'm not an asshole, but I'm not humble. Sure. You know what I mean? So I think we just use words kind of wrong. Yeah. I'm such a literal fuck, bro. I I when I read when I'm reading certain things, it takes me a long time to get through because if I can't define each each word. I well, go, we look it up. I, I look it up. I haven't and read I write a book cover to cover in fucking years because yeah, it, it takes a, me so long. Yeah. But I'm like chewing on something. It's right. so like when I study right. in the mornings, I'll, I'll literally read a book until I, I always tell people I don't read for time. I read until I get a, a nugget. To understand it. And when yeah. I get a nugget, that nugget will be in my brain mm -hmm. all day long. And mm -hmm. it might be three fucking sentences. And I'm right. like, yo, yeah. I don't even think about that. And that just mm -hmm. like stirs my brain all yeah. day long. Right. And there's books right. like that for me that are just, they're mind bending. But I feel like. You, you know, when you start talking about arming men, you know, and, and empowering men and, and helping men, I feel like the the number one thing that, that we're missing in our culture and our society, and I don't give a fuck if you're rich, you're poor, you're black, you're mm -hmm. white, is that vulnerability, is that truth? Because mm -hmm. more men killed themselves in 2021 than the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. Why? Is it because there's a lack of pussy? No. Is it because there's a lack of money? No. Is it because there's a lack of opportunity? No. I think men today are so fucking scared. They're scared of their own goddamn shadow. Mm -hmm. They're scared of the government. They're scared of this. But most of all, they're scared of themselves. Because mm -hmm. you walk into a room with guys like me and you, and, right. and, and you'll take the weakest man, quote unquote, mm -hmm. will posture like a motherfucker. And you see this all the time, right? Dudes will posture. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like, you don't need to flex around me, man. Yeah, really like, not. like that. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Like, go what does that corner. even mean, yeah. right? I don't even. Yeah. I don't like that. But yeah. a dude comes up and is like, "Hey, man, here's where I'm really at. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I'm afraid of. These are the things that I'm dealing with, right? Respect that. that that's a level yeah. of respect. But those are the men that you can then, like, impart your wisdom to. Right. You and know you what can, I'm saying? And see, people like that, I trust to be around me. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? I, I, I got people for days trying to come around, bro. I'm like. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I like a lot of people think I'm mean, so they go through like my boy Big Rob, like tell Mike, tell Mike, yep. tell Mike, and it's I'm like nah, and he be like yo, what you think? I'm like nah, but I, don't, I ain't feeling him, right? Because people come, and then you have people that come around <clears throat> who just want me to just help them out, right? I'm like, I don't know you, I'm not, I, I'm gonna help my friends, you know what I'm right. saying? Um, I respect when somebody do come. Um, and be like, yo, how do I do this? Like, can you teach me this? I don't understand this. Or somebody come through and like, yo, I have a play for you that I think can really benefit yeah. both of us. I respect that shit. 100%. It's a mutual thing. But I don't, I'm not here for just random people coming up to me. And that's one thing I notice about, all right, so I do, I've been doing expo, expos for years. In the United States versus in other countries, other countries, People are way kinder and like, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. How are you liking it out here in yeah. Australia or whatever? Here in America, people are like, hey, can you, how can I? They're yeah. trying give to me, like- Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give yeah, it's, it's a weird, I guess that's a that's a byproduct of us having a capitalistic society, right? right. Which I, I'm fine with. Um, but people have no interpersonal or intrapersonal intelligence. Right. They have no, they have a very low level of self-awareness to not realize how pathetic they're coming across. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like this is why I'm trying to teach dudes like the ethics of masculinity because like, bro, you should have this a little- This is like what I wanted to get down yeah, to is like you, these, this, this aspect yeah. of the, the masculinity conversation because what you talk about is giving mm -hmm. and helping. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, that's foreign to somebody who's not okay with themselves. Right. Because if you don't have, you, it's like the old saying, you can't pour from an empty cup, mm -hmm. which is why the conversation is so fucking weird to people because it's like, why do I want to get rich? Like, if, if I do this, then I have to step on other people. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. The more I have, the more I can give, right? Mm -hmm. Emotionally, psychologically, physically. Yeah, this is this is why you see guys who are like, yo, I work 20 hour days. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for my kids. I'm like, you're doing what for your kids? Mm -hmm. Showing them that you're beat the fuck up by a system. Mm -hmm. Why don't you learn a smarter way to do it so that you can actually go to their soccer games and go to their Facts. football games yeah. and go to the swimming meets yeah. and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, you know, being married, having mm -hmm. a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm hustling, I'm grinding. Look, I got her the freaking range and all this other shit. And I'm like, yeah, but you ain't taking her out on date night mm -hmm. in five fucking years. Don't be surprised mm -hmm. why she bounced. Yeah. And so it's that conversation around the the that vulnerability if you will mm -hmm. in my opinion becomes that superpower because if you can create an army of men of of stature where i don't want to sit at the feet or sit with people or sit around people that think that they can't destroy me mm -hmm. 
It's a weird thought process, right? Because mm, yeah. in your mindset, it keeps everybody sharp, though. It, but but those yeah. are the people you want to roll with, and this yeah. is why that divine masculine conversation, mm. that masculine conversation, specifically talking to men right now, is so important. Because like, if if you don't think that you can kill me, mm. I don't want to be around you. Mm. Like you have that mindset, mm. and it's taking a long fucking time to have that mindset. Now you also know you ain't bulletproof. Right. You also know, but that's what mm. keeps you sharp. Right. That's what keeps you sharpening the tools and right. the fish and the whole thing. But yeah. like at the end of the day, when you walk into a room, mm. you're not like, man, those dudes like that guy's better than me. And this guy's better than me. Like, no, I'm nice. the baddest motherfucker yeah, on never, this planet. That's right. Never a thought, yeah. And that's why I think that divine masculine, it's so weird. Cause it's like, is it hippie? Is it is it just this soft? Like it's, we just got to rub crystals on our nipples and I mean, be like, whatever. Or is it, it killing everybody? What listen, is it? When they hear it from the right person, yeah. cause I tell I tell it like this, I love myself. Like I have so much love for yeah. myself. The fact that I have so much love for myself, I fortify myself in every possible way. Yep. I'm a fucking juggernaut, bro. So yeah, yeah, I sit with physicists and match wits with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I fit. I sit with uh, Navy SEALs and we can trade war stories. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I sit with entrepreneurs and I got big numbers. You know what I'm saying? That's why, because I love myself. I love myself enough. I, I love myself to not allow filth to come out of my mouth like a lie. You yeah. feel me? That's divine masculinity is love. There it is. So they got to hear it from the right people. Right. Maybe they only hear it from the yoga guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, not appealing. But they hear it from people like us. They relate, you know? So I think a good part of my career when I show certain things of opulence is good because people they're aspiring for opulence and having nice things right that shit works it's a marketing tactic right and listen sometimes we got to put the the medicine in the ice cream for people to, to ingest it so i'm down with that i don't care about the process i care about the message the the objective being completed so i'm i happen to be metamorphosizing out of that though you know what i'm saying um i think i've done enough of that shit right i think that the people that really rock with me, they know my heart and they know my mind and my intentions. So now I can be more uh, uh, me, the real me. All of this has been the real me, but you know, they're getting a, a new ascension of me, right? And I'm really, I really feel like I've been shedding my cocoon lately, bro. So um, I've been way more chill, way, way more quiet and contemplative. I've been just studying every day and I love that shit. And, um, <clears throat> I'm writing a lot. My content is a lot different now. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's weird to some people, but hey, a lot of people like, bro, that shit hit me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I enjoy doing it, you know? And I and I do respect people that follow me enough to give them intellectual information. I respect them. Yeah. I don't think they're stupid. Yep. I think they're smart. And if they don't understand it, they'll keep picking at it until they do. I get I have that kind of respect for my audience. Yeah. I think what's cool is is being able to in the day and age of of masks not just the physical mask but like day and age of of people pretending to be something that they're mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. you know establishing something that they're not I mean, you meet enough people yeah. where you meet them and you're like what that, that ain't the same dude right <laughs> yeah. and i always tell people i'm like i'm the same asshole online as i right. am in person yeah. you know what i mean yeah. i talk about the same stuff but it's like i really feel like this is that wave that's been coming and and this is what i think is brilliant about social media is it gives people like you and I megaphones like mm -hmm. we can talk Facts. we can preach yeah. from the housetops where you know Jesus sat on the side of the the, the hill on a rock mm -hmm. and people just came right, right. And it's like if you liked it you sat and chilled right. if you don't like it you just keep on the path and that's right. what I love about social media is like I get to share my my journey I get mm -hmm. to share my journey of love and connection mm -hmm. and and my marriage and my kids and mm -hmm. I get to show people me being mm -hmm. me and right. when I fuck up here's here here it is and mm -hmm. when i win here it is and yeah. when i'm sad here it is and yeah. when i'm excited here it is and it's like right. i feel like that's the real aspect of freedom for me and listen i'm gonna tell you like i'm a fan of yours because i love your truth you know i love the family set up you know what i'm saying i love everything you put out there and you empower i love the free man yeah right one of them, I, you know, I want like two more sons. And one of them, my, my plan on them was naming him Freeman, Free Man. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, it's trademarked. You know what I mean? Like, you got to pay me like 100K a month for that shit. You know what I'm saying? I, actually, actually, <laughs> it's actually that, was, that was a what? name that blacks would 
acquired for themselves when they became free from no plantations. Shit. Freeman? Freeman. No shit. It wasn't just Freeman, it was free man, but you say Hell Freeman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I resonate with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. So so um uh but one son gonna be king. That's Hell our yeah. last name, but it's just he's gonna have one name, just King. King King. That's it. <laughs> Not even King, just King. That would actually be cool as fuck, bro. Just king. What's your name? King. I don't have a last name. It's my it. first and my yeah. last. So uh and Freeman. Dude, that you know the I mean? it came that that came to me just like Lions Not Sheep came to me. Mm -hmm. And 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 it was so simple. And it's funny because the simplicity a lot of people make fun of, a mm -hmm. lot of people mock and they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, but the right. whole philosophy that I've got is like needing nothing. I was mm -hmm. talking to Andy Fasilla about this yeah. the other day. Like, shout out to Andy. Yeah, I love that. He, he's he's fucking one of my one of my best friends. And like, mm -hmm. we were talking, and 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 you know, we're always about helping people. Level. This is what I don't think a lot of people understand about what mm -hmm. you're doing and what I'm doing and what Andy's right. doing and what Ed's doing mm -hmm. and what Rob's doing mm -hmm. and and all these guys is. It's like I don't need to be on it. You don't need to be on it, right? Mm -hmm. We could just pedal our shit and push right. our goods and right. whatever, whatever. But right. it's like, yo, if you actually stop for a second, like. How how is it that you and I, from two different backgrounds, from two dif different like skin types and different mm -hmm. ideas and mm -hmm. philosophies and whatever else, how are we chopping up the same conversation? And mm -hmm. it's a mindset, it's a mentality, it's right. an ascension level. And and it, and what I'm excited about is like more and more people are talking about this shit. Mm -hmm. More and more people are talking about getting their house in order. Mm -hmm. More and more people are talking about the kids mm -hmm. and helping the kids and really understanding like what that game is in the long run. And and I think it takes a it takes a humble servant. It takes a, a man of humility, but of great stature mm -hmm. to be able to stop him and go, all right, here's where I'm strong. Here's where I'm weak. Mm -hmm. How do I find the motherfuckers that can help me take these weaknesses and make them strengths and truly be on a journey of like becoming free? Because, right. bro, when you need nothing, mm -hmm. not only is that dangerous to the government and is that dangerous, but, bro, that is like the ultimate in my opinion, essence of life. Like, right. why are we here? Need nothing. I don't need food from you. I don't need water from you. I don't need money. I love myself enough yeah. to know that I am love. Like, I yeah. don't need a codependent relationship. Right. Like, I can love me to the to the to the to the level where I'm truly in the essence of love. Right. right. I don't need security because I'm fucking mm -hmm. sharpening the sword. Right? right. To me, that's the ultimate game. Mm -hmm. Like, that's really what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's what you're doing? Yeah, man. All right, so it's a couple things that I'm doing, like <clears throat> pouring into my children, right? Because it feels good. Yeah. And I, I, lo I admire. They're so cool. You know what I mean? I'm very, Kids are fucking. Dope, I'm very aren't fortunate, they? right? Yeah. It's my favorite thing. Being yeah, a dad, it's yeah. the coolest fucking thing. Right, man. right. And I met uh, Flex Lewis's daughter. I'm like, I can't wait for her and my daughter to hang out. Yeah. They both got these cute personalities. I'm just in that world, right? And so, I, I developed a certain level of love when I first had a child, right? That I didn't have before. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't there. So that's one thing. That's a, a heavy part of me. Another part of me is myself, is my own personal growth and ascension, right? I study a lot. I've always read a lot. I've always been very versed in religions, multiple religions. I don't look at any of it as literal, right? I don't look at it as bullshit either, right? I think that a lot of us misinterpret these texts or don't even read it and just have an idea of yeah. what somebody said it means. But, you know, I see, like, you said something that I say all the time earlier. I love that you said this. You said, we're separated from divinity. We are divine. Right. We are. We are. You know, we're gods, right? I grew up where we greeted each other, peace, God. I'm giving you peace, and I'm calling you a god so you can have confidence. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you could act like it, right, and respect yourself. Um, so... People are so fucking incredible, right? You and I, I don't know if you went to school or not, I have no formal education, right? I literally sit down with physicists and we chop it up and have a good conversation. I become a self-made millionaire just like you mm -hmm. have. Nobody taught me how to do this, right? right? That's incredible. We invented, humans invented phone, wireless <laughs> communication. You know what I'm saying? It's a trip, huh? Car, but yet people think they're nothing. I know. You know what I mean? People are so, we have Michael Jackson, Drake, whatever. And people that can just control millions of people and make them feel good. Yeah, Human beings are so powerful. Yeah, Out of all the billions of species that's been on this earth, as far as we know, we're the only ones with the right combination of things to be able to engineer the world, right? To have a glow on this globe when you're outside. There's no other planet like this, right? That's fucking incredible. 
yet people they talk about hypothetical things like, oh, if they're aliens, they'll be smarter than yeah, us. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why would we think that something out there <laughs> would be like the the most unique, weird creature on yeah. this planet? If there's aliens, they'd probably be primitive, like most other life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We are we are so incredible, and I have so much faith. I do have faith in humanity, right? Me too. Because I got faith in myself and yeah. people like you. And these, and then people even on different levels like Elon Musk, you know what I'm saying? I love that Elon is one of the richest men on the planet. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah. a banker. Yeah. A tech dude that do dope shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we were with Elon Musk, bro. Uh, at, you know the Dave Chappelle concert where yeah. he got attacked? Yeah, yeah. We was all together. Really? Yeah, because my brother I is, love that guy, by the my way. My brother's head of Diddy Security. So Diddy, we all went with Diddy's, and it was Diddy, Gunna, and Elon. It was dope. Hell yeah. In a box. We was all in a box. Elon's a down ass dude. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. So that and that dude is the boss of this planet, damn near. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we're in a good space in society. We're in a space where certain scientists are cool now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So all of the bullshit, bro. I just want to do my part to like knock this status quo bullshit down. Yeah. Get people thinking for themselves. You ain't gotta think like me, just think. Sure. Just fucking think. Yeah. yeah. Look, you ain't gotta think my like me, just think. And you start thinking you're gonna be thinking like me. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Look, yeah, that, I, they come back around. They're like, "All right, remember I, that wild shit you were talking about? I get it now. Let's right, talk about exactly, that shit." Exactly. Right. I, I always default to truth. Yeah. Whether it's whether somebody else brought it up or me, I don't care. I'm about truth. Yeah. I ain't gotta be right, but I I would like to be right. So I'm not gonna jump out there on anything that I don't know. Yeah. And I have no problem telling people I don't know. They be like, "Do you believe?" Uh, I don't believe anything. I either know or I don't know. Mm. And I and I'm always willing to learn. Yeah, you know what I mean, what do you what do you think about God? I'm intrigued because you're like I know yeah. you believe in divinity and, mm -hmm. and and higher power, but like yeah. from a, from a secular world, like again we go back to words. Yeah, what is yeah. God? Right, like yeah. what is that to you? Like how are you raised in that? And then like where are you mm -hmm. at right now? I'm intrigued. All right, so raised in Islam, right? Um, but my viewpoints are different than most people. You know, it's not religious, mine, and I. God, I, I haven't landed on it yet, hmm. but I'm working on it, right? And it's it's seeming like God is man, you know? We clearly created God in our own image, right? Because if it's as scripture says, right? This omnipresent, omnipotent, all-knowing, all-powerful, but he has human emotions? Hmm. My God's a jealous God. <laughs> really? Why? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, my God... The man, God, Jesus' father, but Jesus is God. It's confused. Like, what? Jesus is God? No, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so God's a ghost. Yeah. He's Jesus. He prays to God. It's like, it's confusing, right? I'm like, y'all need to leave this shit alone trying to like, because nobody can explain that mm -hmm. part, right? Let's say we got that shit wrong. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So God, to me, well, to most people on planet, you know what God is? To most people hmm. is money and violence. Cause that's what make a person to do anything. Been more people two. killed on and, and since the dawn of mankind over God and religion than any other yeah, subject or topic. Yeah. So money and violence is the great motivator for mankind. But for me, I say love right now, yeah. right? Like God, my God is love, right? Because that's what governs me. So, but when when it comes to like this universe and how we got here and all of this shit, I sit and thought on these things. Each person has 215 petabytes of digital information in our bodies called DNA. A petabyte, one petabyte is 10,000 terabytes, okay? One petabyte is the equivalent of, if you take a standard piece of paper with ones and O's, binary code, 500 billion pages of this information as one. We have 215, what the fuck? <laughs> if you uncoil our DNA- We ain't even high, man. Like, we yeah. go down the rabbit hole, high, it's like, what? <laughs> if you uncoil the human DNA, it can, from here, it'll wrap yeah. around the, the moon 100,000 times. Yeah. What? So all of us have that much information in it. So you say, what is DNA? It's digital information. You go, look that shit up. And it's instruct is, is genetic instructions to create us from our parents, from their parents, so on and so forth. 215 petabytes? What the fuck is in there? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How far does human civilization go back? Yeah. You feel me? So 
it's a it's a it's like hmm what I wonder it what would all that information say okay because I could see my mother in me and my father in me and personalities but it just keeps going you know what I'm saying and it it multiplies to a crazy uh, amount 215 petabytes I was reading this I never even heard of a petabyte you know what I'm saying yeah it's so much information and I was shocked when it said DNA is digital information right so we talk about simu they have these simulation theories, right? Interesting, right? There's a there's a conference, a debate every year called Monk Debates. Y'all can look this up. Monk Debates is the world's top scientists debating on if this is a simulation or not. Bro, we should go to that. I'm let's down, go to it, bro. I'm down. I'll bring the mushrooms. Like, let's they go. Can, <laughs> they, they can never <laughs> land on anything, and even the most skeptical ones can never say I can't say it's not. Mm. You know what I mean? So. We can we can uh, reconcile every mystery of the universe with geometry, with mathematics. Mm -hmm. Mathematics come from the mind of men. What the fuck? So did man create the universe? Mm -hmm. You feel me? No, dude, so, trust me. I'm so so I'm not. I haven't landed nowhere yet, right? I think I need some more years of like my mind opening up more and understanding information more. I've been trying to dive into ge geometry. That shit is hard though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's beautiful. I did come into to this, uh, reading this uh, not long ago. I'm gonna dive deeper into it. They say in ancient Kemet, Kemet is what we call Egypt. They had certain temples that was for therapy that just had uh, these geometric shapes all over the place. And you would just come in and just look at it. Mm -hmm. And it would give you a certain ease. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and there's a lot to that. They, they did a study in these hospitals. Um, I think it was like 20 patients, uh, uh, 40 patients, 20 on each side of the hospital. They all had similar ailments, similar, similar, similar age. One side, they had a view of like just nature. The other side was a view of a wall, nothing. This side recovered 35, 30% faster than this mm. side. You know what I'm saying? Just having something beautiful and, right. and to look at, just to look at, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So the human, Bro, humans are so fucking incredible. The human body, the human mind, the 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 complexity and ingenuity of our creativity and our thoughts, the intellectual dexterities, um, the fact that you cut yourself, your body just fucking heal. That shit blows my mind. You cut yourself, it heals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A bone break, it fuses back together. Yeah. yeah. What? So <laughs> we're such, but but we are separated from our divinity. So our real healing. We're separated from it because we don't know. We we think yeah. we need a medicine to do yeah. it. We think we need a doctor. You know what I'm saying? And we don't have like the physicians and medicine men and shamans and witch doctors of old. They you know they would heal with hands and shit like that. I watched a program and this it was a thing in Australia with these people, these Aborigine people, bro. They they heal people with their mm -hmm. hands. It's a whole thing on it. Yeah. Why is this shit not? out there yeah. you know what i'm saying these people are rugged they look like just living off the earth but they go and get these people to help people with paralysis all kind of shit. they're doing shit with their hands and they're like 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 doing something with their hands and like pulling at your wherever mm -hmm. you have ailments like as if they're pulling the shit out of them i don't i don't say that that shit don't work you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying i'm open to understanding it more but why not you know what i'm saying we have i always say this magic and miracles are only magical and miraculous because we don't understand the processes mm -hmm. of things. There's plenty of things right now that if you talked about 30 years ago, they'd be like, that's bullshit, that's magic. Yeah. Like fucking FaceTime. Now you're like, 30 years normal. ago, FaceTime, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and I, TV, that's fucking crazy to me. Like a t to watch a human in a TV, yeah. you're watching a three dimensional representation of a person in a two dimensional setting in a different time, because it was recorded weeks, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This shit is all crazy when you really think about it. Yeah. But with everybody's so like busy working and doing mundane shit, they don't even think about this shit. Just like what you were talking about earlier, like, okay, you get money, then now what? That's right. Like when you are struggling for resources, that's the most important thing to you. Yep. But when you have resources, you start elevating to a whole mm -hmm. nother level of consciousness. We don't talk about these things that much. So people, young men need a goal. Bro, at this age, at least be at six figures. 
this age you should be a millionaire. We need to be telling people that like it's normal, because mm-hmm. it is. It's normal for us. Shit wasn't hard, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, and everybody I'm around is millionaires. Yeah. When people be talking this money shit, I'm like, bro, money is easy to get. Yeah. It's everybody simple. got money. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. What else? What like, else? Where's your good? mind? Yeah. So we need to make this shit. We need to cast spells on people, <laughs> right? <laughs> By telling them like, yo, it's easy for you to be a millionaire, bro. Yeah. That shit ain't nothing. Bro, a million dollars is nothing to me. No. It ain't shit to me. I had uh a twenty 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 one, twenty two. I had a million dollars taken out of an account, right? One point one million dollars. It was an error I did with this QuickBooks bullshit. They held that shit for like eight months. I didn't even give a fuck. I, was, I know I was gonna get it back, yeah. but it didn't stress me. Not because I'm not much of a baller, but like, yo, that shit is easy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, <clears throat> that shit, when I was younger, I was like, wow. But then you get there, it's like, all right, boom, what's next? Mm-hmm. You know? So my mind is not like money oriented no more, right? Would I like to be a billionaire? Absolutely. I, I, I do trust my process and I do trust that me just trying to do good work will bring me the resources that I need. Yeah. You know? I had a CD when I was in, in, in uh like a young man. It was Deepak Chopra. Mm. And he said, um, I never taught my kids to get good grades and get a good job. He said, I taught them to find something in life that you want to do that's good for people and focus on that. And then everything you need will come to you. And he said, as a result, they became very successful. You know what I mean? So that's like my, that that stuck with me when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And that's my path. You know what's funny? Like, all, all, I, all I asked was like, you believe in God. That's oh, what I love about, no, but that's yeah, what yeah. I love about this yeah, shit, bro. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it is, is <laughs> we could unpack about 500 things that you just said. Cause it's like, so many people are living in a one dimensional reality. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it, what I fucking love about literally everything you just said, for the most part, is it can be summed up in, I'm not really sure. I have an answer, a simple answer. Yeah. Do you believe in God, Mike? I do not believe in anything. Right. Because belief is nothing. It's like you think something is. I either know or I don't know. Right. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't fully understand the concept of God. That's See, and what, what what's... What I love about that, man, and and this is coming from a dude who was raised Catholic, Mormon, like I, I understand the construct and the in the box of religion, is most people are terrified of the mystery. Mm-hmm. The mystery is what excites us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is what I love about keeps your up, vibe. Keeps you up at night. We, when we, if, we're, if we're rapping about stuff, like we haven't even been talking about business and yeah. money and bowling yeah. and co- the, like the conversations we have are like the mysteries, mm-hmm. the depth. What don't you know? Where, where are you? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Right? I fucking love not knowing a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I love that, like, I get to go on a journey, maybe for the next month, maybe for the next hundred fucking years, mm-hmm. to try and understand something deeper, right. or to understand something better. You start talking about geometry and math. I've been I, I've been down and 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 communed with the sacrament enough times right. that. The whole world is math. Right. Somehow, yeah. some way, the yeah. geometry. Every single time I've gone and I've visited with the plants, and I've mm-hmm. I've gone and met with my shamans and mm-hmm. done those things. Everything ends up being geometry. So right. it's like I sucked at math growing up. I hated math, but now it's like you want to. Yeah, now, now I'm yeah. like shit. What does that mean? Right, right. Like like the the cellular level. Everything has these these ways and this organization that we as humans are so unorganized and so discombobulated and all over the right. place and they said this and they said this and they said this and this book says this this book said they like there's order to a lot of this shit yeah and we're trying to create order with unorganized creatures right you know what i mean yeah. like even just what you're saying mm-hmm. in in the answer about god most people yeah. fear that question right i love to ask people that question like whenever yeah. i'm hanging out with my with my friends it's like I don't care about your tax returns and what you did last year and yeah. what your CRM is yeah. and all that <laughs> shit. I'm like, so what do you think about God? Like, right. what's your vibe with yeah, it? You know well, what I'm saying? Because it gets I'm the same my way. brain spinning. You mm-hmm. see something that I don't see, or yeah. you got a book that I haven't read, or mm-hmm. and it's this constant level of expansion. Yeah, and I think that's what I know. That's what excites me the most about life mm-hmm. is knowing that I don't know, but knowing that I get another day to go on a journey. Right. And yeah. to open up new doors and to have more conversations because right. it's like when you start really exploring, and I hope people that are listening to this understand like, like what you're saying because it's like the journey is really where the lessons come. Yeah, the questions are are there not because you're weak. Mm-hmm. 
but because you want to be stronger. Right. Like being able to seek out shamans, mm -hmm. medicine workers. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't new. This isn't yeah. hippie because, no. you know, uh, you know, Aubrey Marcus talks about it and yeah. shit like that. It's yeah. like this is thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands Correct. of years. It's in scripture. People talking about. It, it's literally in scripture. Totally. Yeah. Finding the medicine worker, going into mm -hmm. the places, like communing with the Almighty. I mean, yeah. there's 30 years of Jesus's life. We don't even know what the fuck he was doing. Right. right? We only know about a small portion of his life. Right. But I, what I love, and I truly, truly, truly hope people hear about where you are, where I'm at, where a lot of these these men specifically that, that are in our space, there's a lot of things that we know and there's a lot of things that we don't know. And the things we don't know, mm. we're on a journey to know. Right. And I think that's what's really, really powerful about life right now mm. is so many men are in this space where they're like, I have to know it all. I got to have every answer. I got to know. And when you start talking about God and you start talking about depth and even yourself, like... Most people don't even know who the fuck they are. Yeah. They don't know themselves. They've never learned to love themselves, let alone. Here's what's fascinating, too. So people will tell you, well, God is whatever they tell yeah. you what God is. I'm like, okay. Oh so you already know it. So your your mind is closed. Totally. You can't receive anything, right? It's like, bro, and I sit with people because they're in fear. Mm -hmm. Because if, since birth, they've been taught that you go against this, you go to hell. Yep. I was scared of, bro, I was scared of everything when I was growing up. Like, Lord, please forgive me for this. Please yeah. forgive me. Please forgive you're me. In please you're forgive in me. Communion, yeah. uh, repentance all the time. All the time. It's <laughs> like you're everybody's gonna go to hell. Yeah. According to scripture. Right. Because you don't know when you're gonna die. You don't know if you're gonna ask for forgiveness by the time you die. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just oh fuck. It's a wrap, right? right? So people are in such fear, right? And I just not I don't have fear in me like that, right? right. I did when I was younger, but I grew out of that. Yep. I just don't fear anything. Now I'm not reckless, but I don't fear anything, right? I calculate shit. But I asked somebody, I've had this conversation many a times. I said, they say, you know, Jesus died for our sins. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, That's the craziest question. Guys. Nobody can answer. It's like, well, why do we, so we can yeah. sin and we're cool? Right. Like, no, he died for our sins, but you still got, what does that mean? Yeah. That word, that. It makes it you makes, think. It makes no sense. But you have to think. You got to think, but nobody, they just accept it yeah. and they say it. As if like that's profound. Like right. maybe it is. Maybe I'm stupid, but I don't think so. Right. He died for my sins. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I could sin. No. Why do I have the ability to sin? Like there's so many questions, yeah. right? And I, I sat with a is a friend of mine and um love her to death. She's very religious, right? She's mega rich, right? Her and her husband they do. When you, some people get super rich and just be hardcore evangelical right right but it's weird because it's not it's not the tenets of 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 divinity the shit that they be on but they think that giving money and doing all of this shit is holy whatever yeah so when i'd rather go out there and work you know what i'm saying like i don't when i have a, a organization called dirty angels i don't donate money i go i get people to come meet up with me we put food together and, and hygiene kits and go out and give it to homeless people we do it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not giving money. Anyway, she was she was saying like, you ever go to church? I'm like, I've been a few times. You should come with me. I said, I'll go, I, that's cool. Yeah. And she like, yeah, you need to, she kept pushing it like, you know, you need to be more involved in this and that. I'm like, all right, that's, that's your thing. But you know, she kept pushing it, right? I'm like, you're religious. I don't want to like right. hurt your feelings, you know? but she kept pushing me to respond. So I said, look, all right, I'm gonna say this. This and this right now might piss a lot of people off, but please have an open mind. I was trying to make a point to her. She have a special special needs kid, right? I said, you know what? I don't subscribe to the God that gave you a special needs child. Like fuck that guy. Cause what's the lesson in that? Mm -hmm. It makes your life so fucking hard. You know what I'm saying? And why did that beautiful little girl have to be born like that? You know what I'm saying? I don't subscribe to the God that allows a child to be born into a, a family that sexually abuses them. Fuck that guy. Because what's the lesson in that? You know what I'm saying? So I said, look, I'm just not tapped into that which y'all are on. She didn't even get upset because she understand, like, yo, my life is harder with my daughter like this. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what's the, what's the, what's yeah. the allegory of that? Right. What's the silver lining of a, having a special needs child? Look, if I had a special needs child, I would love it to death. But I would, if I was a man of like faith like that, I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. 
Why? Why? What did I do for this? Or if you punishing me, why does this baby got to deal with that shit? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a lot of questions that cannot be reconciled when people are holding on to these archaic ways of understanding the scripture. You know what I'm saying? And people got to understand, too, like a lot of scripture was manipulated for certain people that was in power at the time to bend things to their will. I'll give you an example. Christianity in America was taught to blacks on plantations. We couldn't, we weren't allowed to read. We can have Bibles and we can go organize for church only, right? And they taught us, they said, look, because it's slavery in the Bible, right? Look, you obey your master and you go to heaven. So don't talk back. This is how there's many plantations have way more blacks on it than whites. So you're like, why don't they just take it over? Because of that book. Right. They're not educated. They believe in this this ghost in the sky that can strike you down and put you in hell. Everybody believes it. So you want to go to heaven if you do what you're supposed mm-hmm. to do. And a lot of our old songs that they were singing together, just like passing time, it was basically saying, yeah, it sucks now, but at least we'll go to heaven after yeah. this. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Mental slavery. Mental slavery. Yeah. So, and, and that shit is way more powerful than any kind of 100%. physical uh, uh, refinement. So, um, scripture can be used in such evil ways yeah. and it has been for centuries oh, yeah. you know what i mean i don't i don't shit on scripture though i think scripture is fascinating it's beautiful totally agree but it's been perverted so many times you i had know a, what I, mean? I had an interesting experience with my daughter um probably oh, five years ago and at the time um my, you know, I smoke cigars, drink whiskey, the whole thing, but yeah. my ex-wife is still very much in the Mormon church, which there's mm-hmm. no drinking, there's no smoking, right. there's none of that shit. She came over one weekend, and I could just tell she was off, right? Right. And she was frustrated, and, and I'm I'm like, baby, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? And my daughter and I have a very, very, very close relationship. Right. Like, we're very connected. Yeah. And um, finally, she just, like, put it out. She's like, I'm confused, Dad, all right? I'm really, really, really confused because Mom says this, and this and this and this and this and this is bad and this is wrong and this you're going to go to hell for and then I come over here and there's this and it, inside I was like yeah mm-hmm. here right. we go okay right. you know yeah. because she's very 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 advanced for her age and I'm mm-hmm. proud of that because I, I I want to raise independent thinkers yeah, for sure. I don't want like mental slaves and kids mm-hmm. just following along I'm like right. no I want you to think create your own box right. fuck the box make your own box right. and I'll never forget as long as I live I, I, I grabbed her hand I said, let's talk. And we went upstairs. We went and we sat. We sat down and we just sat like knee to knee, mm-hmm. right, on the ground. And, mm-hmm. I, and I just started asking her questions. I'm like, you know, do you think, how do you feel around dad? Is dad a, a good guy or a bad guy? And, you know, a good guy, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if you took, you know, based off of everything that you know, if, if dad died today, is he going to go to heaven? Is he going to go to hell? I started asking her just a lot of these logical right emotional questions of like what your common sense and what your gut and your soul right. are telling you, right? right. Forget programming and, and yeah. what this verse or that verse mm-hmm. or this deal or that deal. And dude, we sat there for probably three hours mm-hmm. and it was really like, I truly believe kind of my journey and my quest and my inquisitiveness and trying to learn and trying to like really open myself up and get away from the dogma and the, mm-hmm. and the programming. And it was like a first real conversation I had with her of like having her start to question things, Mm -hmm. but understanding things from her own level. Cause like the way you were raised and he Mm -hmm. was raised and 8 billion people, we all got a different story. Right. We all got some different shit. We've all been through, seen through, experienced different shit. So to say it's this one singular, one Mm -hmm. methodical way Mm -hmm. is just really odd. You know what I mean? But dude, I had that conversation with her and, and watching her today who, she's now on a, a Mormon mission, and mm-hmm. like I don't subscribe to the church, and, yeah. and people ask me, well, what's that like for you? Because she's out there mm-hmm. doing this thing, and I'm like, I talk to her every week. We FaceTime every week, and I'll just right. be sitting there smoking a cigar. I'm like, yeah. baby, tell me about your week. Like, right. tell me about the people you're teaching. Yeah. And 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 I feel like it, there's, a, there's an old quote, and I don't remember who said it, um, but it's, I, I believe it fully. It said, live your life so that those who know you but don't know God want to know God because they know you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So live your life so that the people that know you mm-hmm. but don't know God right. want to know God because they know you. Right. You know, and, and I feel like if if we do that, mm. we as a people, 
you can't go wrong there, man. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And guys like you and I who are, who are asking deeper questions, having deeper conversations, I mean, I bet you a thousand bucks, anybody who thought you and I sitting down chopping it up, we'd be mm -hmm. talking about fighting and yeah. boxing right, and right, MMA right. and yeah. money and yeah. business. And we'd be talking talk about God. And it's like, to me, that's that that level of inquisitiveness that I really try and help people see. It's not, it's not bad to not know. It's not bad to right. question. Right. We've been programmed to believe right. questioning is bad. Mm -hmm. This is bad. This yeah. is bad. What is bad? Yeah. Like what is right? What is wrong? You know what right. I mean? I want to empower my kids to, to want to know why. Right. Cause then you, then you become really, really, really powerful when you can establish your testimony mm -hmm. of whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you did it. Right. Not because mommy and daddy told you or the right. school told you or the book told you or the pastor told you or the preacher told you mm -hmm. or the bishop told you. Like, now you went to God right. and talked to the man. Like, right. this is what is fascinating to me is so many people question me. Well, the book says this. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I was talking to him and he said yeah. something different. And it's like, who wrote the book, though? It's like, man, it's a lot of books. I'm writing my own book. Thank you. You're writing a book. Thank you. Thank you. Know? you. And people have no faith in themselves. Once again... Well, God spoke to so and so and he wrote the book. Like, can you prove that? Yeah. And I'm sorry, I need proof. Yeah. If I'm gonna just stand on something. You know what I'm saying? Now I can say, you know, my personal truth is this. That's not an objective truth. And I'm being honest, like my personal truth, I really believe this. Right. I'm not a person of much belief though, me personally, right? Well, I'm gonna take that back. Yeah. I believe that being a good person and being kind to people right. and being honest is virtuous and I don't believe I know because it gives me a good life. I have a good life because of that. Right. When I wasn't like that, I didn't have a good life. You know what I mean? Yep. My life was hell. When I was in jail, that was hell. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm in heaven. You feel me? And the description of heaven and hell, it sound like on earth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen, all right, so in, 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 in Revelations and the Rapture, when they describe getting thrown into hell, right? Yep. I was in max security in LA County. Like, this shit sucked, right? It, it reminded me of scripture. It was dark. It was like a, it was like four or five tiers with a fucking old light hanging down on each one. So it was not very bright. It was bars. Like you don't see that anymore. Mm -hmm. Bars, um, and nonstop the ignorant, most ignorant conversations. The dude from up here yelling down to do down there. When the blacks are asleep and the Mexicans is yelling and it's just crazy, right? I'm like, what the. F is nonstop. That's how they talk, talk about it in the Bible. People gnawing and yelling and this, that, Gnashing that, of teeth. Gnashing of teeth, grabbing at you and you're going down that fucking tunnel. And it's like, yo, this is literally hell. Yeah. And I, the physical condition was one thing. The mental condition was another. Like my kids, I'm away from my kids. Fuck. You know what I'm saying? My dog. Like, because this <laughs> happened to me when my life was back good, right? Yeah. I had to deal with some old shit. And it was like, damn, I gotta deal with this shit, you know what I'm saying? But that was hell, I saw hell. I see heaven, you know what I mean? And it's all based on our decisions right now. I don't know what happens when the casket drops. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna sit here and tell people, you know, I'm gonna go to heaven. I think I'm trying to make heaven right now. Yeah. They say, in the Bible is pearly gates, golden floors, yeah, I want that. Yeah. It's a sound like a mansion. Yeah, yeah. I want a mansion. Like, I you take you some choices that yeah. looks just like that. Big me? ass gates in the front, yeah, a shit yeah. on the gold toilet. I mean, right. Trump's got gold toilets, I think, right? You feel me? <laughs> right, right. That's heavenly, right? And I, 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 I do think that when people make good decisions and are productive in life and are generous and all that, they, they receive the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. When people are evil, when people lie, when people steal, cheat, <coughs> when people, uh, you know, do things of that nature, they, they their lives yeah. are hell. Yeah, it sucks, right? So, you know, I don't. It's been, you know, if you read scripture and then you look at when it was written, you look at what people understood in their level of knowledge back then to where it is now. As civilization goes on, we know more things. Yeah, like you know, that's why our kids always are smarter than the parents, right? To an extent. It's like, that's normal progression, so why are you still holding on to certain things as factual, wow, huh? right? Because we've been taught to fear this shit. Yeah. In the West, we have what's called obedience authority model religions. Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. You do this or The die. biggest ones on the planet. Yeah, you do this or. Right. Actually, that's they're not. That's a fear. They're that's not, a though. fear. The ones in the East are big. You know, it's, the majority of people on this planet is Asians. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Buddhism, Hinduism, all of that stuff. There's way more of them. But you just, we, we live in our own 
Western bubble. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? I thought the Catholic Church or Christianity and then Muslim. Who's, Isn't it who's the, counting, though? Uh, you feel me? You feel true. me? Who's counting? It's true. And who's reporting this shit, yeah, yeah. right? So, um, so here's the thing. And I, I'm very versed in, like, a lot of these Eastern practices, right? Because it's fucking solid, right? It's more solid than our shit. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not judgmental. It's not these people are not us and it's none of that shit, right? There's no dogma. It's just more about like, like Lao Tzu, for instance, he and Tao Te Ching. Tao Te Ching means the way of life, mm-hmm. just the way. And it's all about like, you know, just being without being, right? So um, you were not, like you said, we're sitting here talking, people would think we would be in here talking tough guy shit. Mm-hmm. We're not. But if anybody was in here observing us, they'd be like, them some formidable motherfuckers. Yes. <laughs> We're being without being. We're not yeah. like, yeah, so I'll knock right. this motherfucker out, dude. Yeah. That's so ugly. That's so gross. And I don't like people talking to me like that. Right. I don't want to talk about those things. Right. You know what I mean? So um, so those practices of the East are very transformative. If people, you know, I talk about um, Kuji Kitty, right? I love Bushido and all military oh, yeah. history and war history. Bushido stuff is combat, fascinating, right? man. So, you know, ninjutsu, these guys will have these secret hand symbols, right? To invoke power, right? Try to intimidate their opponents. But they have mantras that they mm-hmm. will recite with it, right? And it was a mantra empowers you. You're telling yourself good things. I'm powerful, I'm strong, I'm mighty. And I do this in the sauna. Mm-hmm. Um, in India, they have mudras, which I do that too. I'm creative. I am from the divine source. Like you're telling yourself good things. Yeah. I'll post these things and people are like, this is demonic. Demonic. <laughs> I'm like, how wow, right? I'm telling myself nice things. Yeah. I'm telling y'all to be good to yourselves. Yeah. That's demonic. Yeah. Fascinating. Dude, when when I got to, when I went through my divorce and I quit going to church, and it, again it wasn't because of anger, it was just more. It was like, yeah. okay, this phase took me to here, mm-hmm. the next phase taking me here. I started really studying Buddhism. Mm-hmm. And I remember like a bunch of my friends and people from the church were like, yo, you're like, you're falling away and mm-hmm. this is demonic shit and, and the right. devil. And I'm like, Buddhism is a way of life. It ain't yeah, even a fucking church. It ain't even talk a about religion. A devil. Like where's the devil at? I'm talking about yeah. making yourself better and becoming one with your mind and understanding like peace and but love. That and goes like, with the closed minded people that, that know everything. Yeah. You can't receive it. That, it's like, they're telling you it's the devil. Like we're, Why? Cause we're, you don't understand yeah, it. Where's the you devil at? I mean? right. What are you talking about? And you believe there's a right. devil with a tail that when horns is gonna come. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. bro, devil, you're a devil. Yeah. You know, we're gods and devils. We have the capacity for either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think so, people fear they fear, and we know this just it's the quote in the whole, people fear what they don't understand. And hate what they can't conquer. And I think what what you see today in our culture, you know, Republicans hate Democrats, Democrats hate Republicans, white people, black people, gay people, straight people, and it's like Rich people, poor people, and there's this 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 fascinating thing. Like I'm always telling people online, that's like sounds funny to say, right? I'm always telling people online, <laughs> but like people that are always talking shit about wealth, mm-hmm. right? I'm mm-hmm. like, look, you you ain't made a million dollars. Don't talk about millionaires. You don't yeah. understand yeah. it yet. You yeah. haven't elevated yourself into that space. Mm-hmm. And so it's easy for you to sit on a sideline and go, hey, mm-hmm. you know, I read on CNN that the rich people don't pay any taxes and mm-hmm. all this other bullshit. I'm like, get yourself rich. This is why and I love the conversation. Yeah. This is why, like, look, I'm never going to understand what it's like to be black because I ain't never mm-hmm. been black. You ain't right. never going to understand what it's like to be yeah. white because you ain't yeah. ever been white. Yeah. Cool. But there, the, the beauty is now there's a middle conversation. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, you teach me, I teach you. You mm-hmm. talk, I talk. And I think right. that's what's dope about like religion. People say, well, prove your God, prove your magic God in the sky. I'm like, I can't. Mm-hmm. Prove that he doesn't exist. Mm. You can't. Yeah. So where does that leave us? Right. It leaves us in this place of like real curiousness and wonder. And mm. those curiousness ideas and yeah. the wonder, like what we're talking about, right. is where you learn. Right. That's where you grow. Mm. Is this making me a better man, a better father, a better right. CEO, or is it not? Is mm. me learning to meditate calming my mind? Mm. You know what I mean? Where there's right. so many secular things that we're just like, no, 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 that's dumb. That's a waste of time, mm. whatever, whatever. And it's like... Mm. I thought the same thing. Like when I started to learning to, to meditate, you mm-hmm. know, I studied with the Ashaya monks. This is like eight years ago mm-hmm. when I was first introduced to meditation and they spend an entire day and you create your mantra mm-hmm. and it's, it's ascension meditation. And mm-hmm. I didn't understand any of this mm-hmm. bullshit. Right. I was like fucking meditation. That's for like the hippies and the right, shit. Like right. I don't do any of that stuff. Yeah. I'm a boss. Like I make money. I build yeah. business. Yeah. And you spent, I spent two and a half days with these Ashaya monks. And the very first time I ever meditated, like 
I had this crazy out of body experience. Mm -hmm. Like I like ascended literally and mm -hmm. like flipped around and I was watching myself and it was weird. I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, what the wow. fuck is this? What is this? Yeah. Right. And you're introduced. And since then I've meditated countless times, right. literally tens of thousands of times. Like, right. but I'm a practitioner of it. I'm constantly studying yeah. Om meditation. Why yeah. did the monks, you know, Om? So you, you start that. doing so Om, yeah. bro. Like oh, I've taken grown ass men. And we'll sit down and do ohm meditation. I'm like, the vibration in your brain, it's physically impossible for you to be pissed off, angry, raging, want a war if you sit down and do ohm meditation for five minutes. And, bro, so, so Sean. It's, it's so, the crazy things, right? When you dive into these things, yeah. there's a lot of science that oh, totally. backs these things, right? right? So let's talk about that, like these vibrational frequencies of sounds, seismic sounds, right? All right. So we're comprised of billions of cells, right? All our cells have a membrane and it has electric magnetic fields around them, right? Mm -hmm. So we're essentially electric magnetic beings, right? We have a field around us, radiate three to five feet, give or take. Now, the higher your cells are vibrating, when they say, it's funny because people say shit, like I have friends that say Even shit. Even you say that, people are like, what, I, this is whack. But, but, no, <laughs> but no I have way. people that say that, that's like into yoga and shit. <laughs> But it's like cute. I'm yeah. like, you know what that means? Like, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah. Because it means something. Right. They don't know. So I tell them, it's literal. Your cells are vibrating at a higher frequency. This is science. Your si your, your your electric magnetic fields are, are are stronger, right? So what what magnets it attracts and it repels. So both become stronger in a person. And well, what are you attracting? What are you repelling? The things you want, the things you don't want or need and don't need, you know? And doing things like meditating. People don't understand, but meditation is difficult. Mm -hmm. it's, it takes a lot of work. Practice. Right? right. Dude, I sat down and I couldn't get it. I'm like, yo, yeah. I've meditated thousands mm -hmm. of times. Yeah. Like, this is just it's, like anything yeah. else, is radically fucking powerful. Mm -hmm. You practice every day. And things you do that's difficult, yep. it's making your body work. Yeah. So your cells are vibrating faster. Running, making your cells vibrate mm -hmm. faster. Lifting weight, all of that stuff, right? Reading, engaging in intellectual discord, right? So this is making your cells vibrate, is making your electric magnetic fields more powerful, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. That's why we attract each other. Yeah. And I, people that don't need to be around me are never around me. Right. You know what I mean? I feel the same way. And You're like, how do you get rid of and listen, when that some, people? I'm like, I don't need to. When, they some, just... when a weird one pops in, I kind of let it in just for the sake of, <laughs> let, me, let me, like, like a dolphin is playing with his food. Like, yeah. let me play with my food for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... So we we have everything, we're free men. Yeah. We have everything that we need. We're efficient, the human body is efficient. We don't need anything. I eat once a day, every Wednesday I don't eat at all. You know what I'm saying? Been doing it for years, right? I don't eat it. Yeah. I have a very, I have an extremely slow digestion process. My I slow down my metabolism, so I don't ever get hungry. Hmm. It's efficient, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't, I ain't worried about shit, right? Because our ancestors ate a couple times a week. Right. And they hunt it on an empty stomach. Yep. And on an empty stomach, the brain works better. Your your ears work better. Your eyes are sharper. You know what I'm saying? When I when I have like cheat days and fucking up or drinking, I can't see shit. Cause I got fucked up eyes anyway. But when I'm on point, I'm 2020. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So people don't understand these things, but it's up to people like us who do tap into this information to share it. Yeah. And that's all I do. I just share this information. These people are giving me, helping afford me a good life. So it's indicative of me to give them as good as information as I can. I think that's what's dope about like your social media. And, and I, I'd like to think mine is I don't really ever tell people what's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Or like, I just tell you what I'm doing. Like, right. this is what works for me. Right. If you like it, great. If you don't, great. If you yeah. vibe with this, cool. If you vibe with that, cool. Right. And I think there's also a, a, a magnetic energy around that where when you're not in scarcity, and this is the reason you know making money and building a mm -hmm. business is important, because it's like when you're not in scarcity, like when you're not in need, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? People act different when they're in fucking right, need. When right. you need to eat, when you need it's money, it's like you you act different, right? But when you have abundance, yeah. it's a oh, different yeah. conversation. Yeah, I just had a download. 2020 is when we connected. Yeah. 2020, you were very angry. I'm gonna tell you, I observed, right? And I, I, so much shit came to me. I'm like, Sax is like, oh, here you go. Get him. Get him. No, no, no. no. no he had... This is good. Right? Yeah. Because you said something earlier. You said, I don't know what it's like to be black. You right. Know what it's like to be black. You do know. That's why you was angry. 2020, because we sat back with like, black people wasn't at, wasn't tripping, right? 
Mm-hmm. You were tripping. You were angry. When now, was this? Now, you and me, I he, conversed he, 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 he about this, right? Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm going to tell you why. For a very, really good reason. You felt what we've been feeling for a long time. I'm like, wait a minute. This dude rich. He live in Utah. There ain't, ain't no mask mandates out there. Why is he upset, right? Oh, I get it. You're not used to having your rights infringed on. Yeah. We are. Right. So I'm like, good, be mad. That's what it feels like. Yeah. And it helps show people that it's ain't a black and white thing. Right. It's a government and people thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we've been dealing with that shit forever. Yeah. When all this shit was happening, I was like, I'm not going to wear a mask anyway. I ain't going to talk about it. Yeah. I'm going to just maneuver through life. All my, look, I've never used credit until 2015. My life has always been off the grid. That's right. how a lot of us operate, right? Because we just like, like it took a long time for me to be, say, yeah, I'm a fucking American. Because we always felt um, welcomed here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So We meaning black people. Black people. So, because we just we treated like shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and then all our leaders were killed. It's like, why'd you do that? It's not nice. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> <It's not laughs> why'd you do that? It's not nice. Yeah, nice. Stop killing me, motherfucker. So, so, so. In 2020, they were making people wear masks, yeah. telling people to stay home, all of that shit. You felt what that shit felt yeah. like. So I'm like, good. Now we can, you know what I'm saying? We all Connection. know what's up now. These motherfuckers are evil. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's not a black, that's that's such low level thinking, right. black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said something like that, man. In fact, I, that was, I didn't have a lot that I wanted to talk to you about. It was mm-hmm. like set, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you said something, you said two things actually. Um, don't let me forget, because I'm going to forget. Babe, my wife's sitting here. She's going to help me, because I fucking re- right. forget. But you said something about Michael the Archangel not too long ago. Yeah. And I, literally, I don't have any notes, but I wrote down mm-hmm. like two things. Okay. Okay. And I wanted to talk to you about that. But yeah. you you did, you said, you said I got to pull this up. Hang with me for one second. Okay. Um, you said, and I was really fascinated by this. I'm going to just pull this video up. Okay. And I think I liked it, because you said, I'm not just a free man. And this, this video, is, you posted on Instagram... Uh, when the fuck was it? It doesn't even say. When does it say? Shit. I don't know. But here, check this out. Dude, I, I'm fascinated by that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, yeah, yeah I, I I guarantee you, if that's the emotion that black people have been feeling for years, like, mm-hmm. put the mask on your face, and yeah, I, mm-hmm. and I guess I can now say I know what it's like to be black because yeah. fuck those guys and fuck the masks. But yeah. I was fascinated when I watched that video because, mm-hmm. like, there's a lot of people today that are angry, yeah. you know, straight up. Yeah. Black, white, gay, straight, mm-hmm. you know, men, women, who's a man, who's a woman, all that bullshit. Right. But I'm really fascinated by this because you, you transcend that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this conversation trends a lot, transcends a lot mm-hmm. of ideologies that I think people would, or boxes that people would put us right. in. But I wanted, I wanted to hear more about that. Like, yeah, what, I, what's I, your I thought is you, on yeah. that? You know what I mean? Because I'm, right. I'm, I'm really, it's something that's like I told you last night yeah. when we were when we were smoking cigars. Like, I grew up in D.C. Yeah, most of my friends growing up were black, and I don't yeah. say that because it's like my token. Nah, Yo, yeah, I got yeah. a couple black yeah. friends, but yeah. I do live in Utah. And, I think right. by you being here, the population yeah. of black people just doubled, right? Because there's no <laughs> yeah. black people no, in Utah. It's not. It's not. But but I grew up that way, and, and these were my these were my boys. These are mm-hmm. like these are the kids from the neighborhood, and this is just how we always right. operated. Right. I know that I'm white, and I, you're black, mm-hmm. the physical skin color. But yeah. like, I never really subscribed to that because if you're an asshole, you're an asshole, and I don't give a shit what your skin mm-hmm. color is, right? right? If you're cool with me, I'm cool with you. Right. For anybody, yeah. right? But I'm really intrigued by that because you have a huge audience. Yeah. You have a lot of I'm glad black people in your this. sphere. Yeah. You do a lot in the black mm-hmm. community, but yeah. like, I want to know about that. All right, so let me let me clarify what I said. So I said I'm close to divorcing myself from the notion of being black. And I'm saying that because we never called ourselves black, right? Europeans call us black. Right. And they call us Negroes and they call us niggers and whatever else they call us, right? So, and the reason why race was invented was to justify colonialism, was to justify the first form of human trafficking, right? Slavery. We were considered cattle, bucks, right? So if you look at early Darwinism, it's funny because they make it nice and cute now, Mm -hmm. but there was a whole hierarchy of race associated with it, right? 
and it was really ugly, you know? They had this European man as the, the standard, and then it go down to the Indians and Asians and Arabs and blacks and Jews, and it was just carcasses of, of, of people, and it was really ugly, and it was like describing how we were like ape people, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's not nice. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> I like so, how you say that. That's not, not nice. nice. You killed oh, us. That's right. not nice. <laughs> so, 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 so here we are in Africa. Nobody was like, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah, it was just, just doing, you, who you were, who you were. Nowhere in the world right. people was doing that, right? Except for the European colonialism of the world, right? Now, um, all right, so we brought, we were brought here. Now, slavery was normal everywhere. Yeah, my, the, my Irish ancestors were, were slaves. When they came to New York City, yeah. like they were slaves. But, but and, I'm saying you know pre, I mean? pre yeah. New World, right. but Old World, slavery was everywhere, but it was never, people, people were enslaved for a certain amount of time. They get their freedom, they go on. This, right? is, this goes back to this, Genghis Khan and yeah, fucking This was whole deal. different, right? This was way different, what happened here in the Caribbean, South America mm -hmm. and America, right? The level of brutality, the you know, no one's ever been taken thousands of miles away from their native land to be slaves before, right? So it was a, a vicious uh, uh, extraction, right? So from, just to put in perspective of how many people died. So you take, out of every 10 people marched from the shanty lands to the coast, excuse me, the coast is where they were, uh, blacks were held in these slave castles to be put on boats and transported to the west. To the west. Out of every 10 that was marched, seven would die because mm. they're going far and it was brutal and seven would die. Out of every three that made it, only one would make the journey, mm. right? So every black person that's here in America now via the transatlantic slave trade is a fucking warrior. Oh, yeah. They made it through some shit, right? Because everybody else died. Nine of the 10 died, right? So... There was a buffer period before bringing us straight here to work. We were brought to the Caribbean islands and really beaten to submission. So they bred like a generation of people to not know languages, customs, any of that shit. The very first ones never got here and worked. You know what I'm saying? There were some, but majority of them were held. It was like, a, I think an 80 year process, right? Of breaking these people psychologically and breeding new people, bringing them over here so they don't know nothing, right? Ones that did come directly over here, it would be like, say if if you have Nigeria, you have Ghana, you have Mali, these people look alike. They don't. They're not the same. Mm -hmm. They don't speak alike. Different languages, different customs, everything. But they would put them, mix them up, and put them together so they couldn't communicate anyway, right? So it was so 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 from there. On the plantations, they they kept everybody in check with the Bible, right? And for the, I don't want nobody to think I'm shitting on the Bible. I'm just saying I'm shitting on these people's tactics and you know, how they perverted the Bible. So they kept everybody in check with that. So we had no. They also did a, a, had a process called buck breaking. So a buck is a strong slave, right? That's what they wanted for their plantation. However, don't be too strong, right? Mm. So they had to humiliate and demasculate. So they would cut our genitalia. They would let us get married, but fuck our wives in front of us. Like really humiliating shit, you know what I'm saying? So if, to make an example out of somebody, they tar them, tar them and feather them, you know what I'm saying? Pull them apart, like tie your, your, your wrists and ankles to horses and have them yep. run. In this, to pull you apart, mm -hmm. right? Really brutal. Public hangings to set an example. There's postcards, people can see this right now at Google. There's postcards of like, you know, families watching a body hanging, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From that, from the, those errors. Because it was to set examples to other slaves, right? The overseers, or you know the term cracker. Yep. It's not even for white people. Even though we say that, right? Yeah. A cracker was the person who cracked the whip on a plantation. Blacks crack whips, so they would strategically separate. You, you let me know if that boy, da, 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 you whoop his ass, and you want stripes for master, you want privilege, so you watching them and you tear that ass up. You know what I'm saying? So the blacks were crackers on other blacks. That's how I was, why so much black on black hatred mm -hmm. and crime, right? It was taught, right? Then you had slaves in the house, had slaves in the field. You know what I mean? Slaves in the house were, were treated better. Usually they're like. 
they're kids of the slave masters, so they're mixed or whatever, but they got treated better. So it was a, a hatred between them and them, these out in the field. They hated them, they despised them, right? It was so much psychological warfare, it really fucked us up, right? So, and then when, and I gotta say this, when the world started seeing what was happening, right, the brutality of slavery, um, people started making changes. And it wasn't just black people, anybody gonna listen to us, it was good white people. Black people couldn't just say, hey, we wanna be free. They, oh, yeah. yeah, you're right, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I will put that out there. So in the South, slavery was huge for the economy. Mm -hmm. They're like, we ain't letting this go. It's free labor, it's gonna crush us. The North wanted to push for abolishment, not for noble reasons, only because they was, they was going to war. Right. They wanted to bankrupt, they wanted to make Nick Lee emancipated, but he didn't give a fuck about slaves. And that's fine, because nobody did. I understand, if I was a white person with money, I would have had slaves too. Mm -hmm. Most white people didn't have slaves, because right. they couldn't afford it, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, it was big for the economy, they wanted to hold on to that shit, so they fought for it. They fought against the United States. They wanted to to succeed and be their own uh, nation. They lost, they lost, right? So um, after that, there were so many laws <laughs> created to make us back into slaves. This is where like the, the black whole men, jail black. system and judicial system yeah. went sideways. Okay, so look, look, a little, bit, a little bit more I history. a lot about A little this. bit more history. Police, there was no police back then, right? It was uh, bounties, bounty hunters, like citizens. Police are, it started out as slave patrol. If you look at the badge, y'all can Google this shit. Google slave patrol, it's the same cop badge. That's the start of it, you know what I'm saying? And it, so so when people say systemic racism, I know that a lot of people don't wanna hear that because it's an uncomfortable truth, but it's a lot of facts to it because it was like police, now police are good people. Some of them are fucked up, yeah. but most of them are good people. And that's a noble job, but that, that uh, industry was built. It was a. Fa it was built to police slaves. That's what it was built for. Of course, as civilization advances and we get better, that's not what it's supposed to be about. But that spirit is kind of there. Yeah. You feel me? So, um, all right. So then we. So we get to where is we're we're free people, kinda. Now, we had a law called vagrancy laws, right? What are you doing here? Let me see your papers. All right, we arrest you. You get arrested for anything. You get beat and then leased to a plantation for indentured servitude slavery. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so it the, was the, the the legal system, the jails. Like when you talk the chain gangs and the whole thing. It was fascinating yeah. how once that happened, like and then mm -hmm. the, the the judicial system established the jails, like our jail system, yeah. and then literally that's why private jails nowadays. And it's a whole other conversation for another yeah, day. It's it's totally crazy. fucked up. Yeah. Well, then yeah, it's. Le so bring them back out. So I'm, I'm very, I'm really appreciative that you want to have this conversation yeah. because a lot of like white men, strong white men, don't want to hear this shit. Yeah, because it's uncomfortable. Like it's a long time ago. Sure, it's not that long ago. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jim Crow was less than a hundred years ago. Jim Crow was these laws that, um, it was bullshit. It was stupid. It was all these laws f to make black men back slaves. The laws were stupid. Jim Crow and black code, black code. A white man cannot compliment a white lady. A white, I mean, a black man cannot black compliment man, yeah. a white lady. A black man cannot light a cigarette for a white lady. A black man cannot raise his hand to shake a white man's hand. I'm like, what? Are all of this weird shit, right? And then, so it was that. There was a movie called The Birth of a Nation, the first real movie in America. It was white guys in blackface imitating slaves, I mean, blacks chasing white women to rape them. Mm -hmm. So they created this weird, like, we didn't rape nobody. We were afraid of white people. You really think a black man gonna rape a white lady? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Y'all got guns, y'all got whips. <laughs> we didn't do that shit. So they they portrayed this crazy, yeah. it was no words, it was like just- Silent movie, yeah. yeah. It was crazy. So they kept, those people then kept um, propaganda, I guess, to keep making us look like animals. You know what I'm saying? all the way up until the Clintons, Hillary Clinton with this, um, they had this thing called, uh, 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 damn, that's Hillary Clinton right there, huh? 
<laughs> Dude, it, I get, it was called, this is what happens sometimes when I get in the bath at night and I have a couple, uh, you know, smokes or whatever. <laughs> you order that I shit. order bobbleheads. I got, I got, instant, I got Fauci. I got all my Trump ones and like Link, everybody yeah. else. Reagan. Mm. It's funny. But Hillary but chilling on the podcast so so table. so there have been a <laughs> there have been a, a organized um, assault on black people, black men in specific, because during their time. Uh, with the cocaine era, mm -hmm. black men were targeted, not black women, right? And that's when black families just became not a thing. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, backing up to slavery days, there were so many wicked tactics implemented and the concept of race was, was I just don't want to be in that. You yep. know what I'm saying? Now, I, I'm a black man, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's arbitrary and it's a construct, but it's a thing now, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm black, you white, whatever. So I I am a black person. When I was saying there, it's like I'm divorcing myself from this fucking system. Cause yeah. just like mentality. Yeah, this system That's how I saw it. That's when I heard this, that. And, That's yeah, what I and thought. This of. system, this is how silly it is. I don't to me, bro, a man is a man. Right. Now, around that same time, me and my brother, we was, we did a video and straight straight this shit went viral this clip. But he said, Do you do you like black people more than white people? I said, do I like black people more than white people? I said, no. I said, I don't like black people or white people. I don't like nobody. <laughs> you know I like my dogs. I like I people. My dogs. I said, I like people that I like. I yeah. like people that I know. Yeah. I don't just inherently like somebody because they look like me. Right. I don't dislike somebody because they don't look like me. You know what I'm saying? Good people. I'm, I don't deal with people like that. I fuck with good people. Right. Look, I was just at this thing yesterday. I was the only black person there on stage. Yeah. Cause I'm like, yo, these are good people. I'm fucking with this. You know what I'm saying? And I got so much love afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not that guy that's, race is an issue, right? Because there's problems um, and, but I don't, and I have no problem sitting with somebody that's a racist. The first time I came out here, I did, right? First time I came out here to Utah, I was on edge. I was like, shit, I don't know about that. You know what I'm saying? But I was pleasantly surprised because everybody was so fucking yeah. nice. So at this event, one guy, he just kept pacing and shit, and people were drinking. What so event he, was it? FitCon. Oh, okay. Yeah, in 2020. No shit. Yeah. And it was at the after party at some dude's house, big mansion, and dude was sipping. He was cool, though. He, you know, he looked like a little Nazi vibes, you know what I'm saying? Which is weird that oh, an American white supremacist would associate with Nazi Germany mm -hmm. when they were an enemy to America and a white supremacist supposed to be about America. Yeah. It's just weird, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, so we start talking and he's sipping. I could drink a gallon of Hennessy and be normal. He got- he I'm gonna got, challenge you on that, bro. Bro, say less, I, say I'm less. A, I'm, I'm an Irishman, I I'm can a drink tank, a lot, bro, I'd be fucked I'm a, a I am a tank, bro. <laughs> I could get, I could drink the everything. The next podcast we do. I could drink everything, take everything, and be at the gym in the morning. Early. Yeah. Anyway, so he started talking, and we had a real conversation. He's like, you know, man, like, you know, I, I guess you could say I'm racist, but I didn't, I didn't want to be. It was my parents taught yeah. me that. He said, I don't even know any black people. I said, I get it. I understand. I understand why you would feel that way. Right. You know what I'm saying? People, like you said, fear what they don't understand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you have no interaction with black people, you probably just think whatever. Yeah. You might hear some sound bites and see shit. What you see on TV and, and the then that, that's and your perspective like that. of black people. But he was like, bro, I love rap music. I love black culture. We chopped it up, exchanged numbers, hugged it out. Yeah. I don't look down on people like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I understand, especially a young man, you know, a lot of bullshit with cops, right? I highly, I have, I wish the whole police structure was different, right? I, I wish you didn't have 20 year olds, 25 year olds out there. Me at 20 with a gun, no thanks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no thanks. And I got buddy LAPD homies. Yeah. They say the same thing. He said, like, why you do it? Like, yeah, I was doing some bullshit. I was young. Sure. I said, bro, I understand. That right. doesn't hurt my feelings. Right. I get it. It makes sense. So, like, like special forces and any armed forces, they wait till guys are 35 to, to consider the elite soldiers to have, to be men with life experiences, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have young men out there who don't have any experience with <coughs> other races, right? We have uh, white dudes patrolling black neighborhoods. You don't know what everything looks like. Yeah. Just like when I was young, when I moved, I went to Arizona for, for school, 1920. I thought every white dude was, was a skinhead. I'd never seen a skinhead. 
I, every dude I seen with Doc Martens, I thought it was a skinhead. You know what I'm saying? I had no idea there was skinheads that hated racism. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But why? Like I shouldn't. I'm not qualified to be a cop in a white community. Right. I don't know anything about white culture. You know what I'm saying? At that age, but it's like that with black culture. Like you have white cops. Look, part of when I was dealing with my legal stuff, they try to put a gang injunction on me, right? And it's a very racist law, right? Because there's no white gangs, right? It's black and Mexican gangs, right? And the they they put that on you. It's a ten year enhancement on your sentence. Mm. If you do a two year robbery, like a two year crime, you get twelve years if they put, slap a gang enhancement on you. Yeah. So they did that on me, but I'm like, mm, what is this about? I'm not a gang in a gang. I had a whole trial just to prove that I'm not in the gang. Yeah. Right. And the detective, Sean, bro, this shit scared me. The detective knew nothing about gangs or black anything. My lawyer just destroyed him. I'm just like, that guy was, if I didn't have the wherewithal to challenge this shit, I'd have been oh, yeah. wrapped up yeah. for a long time for, for just because he said it. Yeah. He is a gang detective that knew nothing about inner city life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have friends, like my, one of my best friends, T, he works with me. He's he's black as my shirt, big dude, loud. Black people loud. We aggressive as fuck with each other. Uh, fuck you, shut fuck the fuck, shut the fuck up. I'll fuck you up, whatever. We talk like that, mm -hmm. right? Somebody from the outside hear that shit, they like, oh shit. Yeah. I had to tell him like years ago, we're moving into different circles, like, bro, you gotta turn that shit down, bro. You scaring people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah. he's a teddy bear, bro. He yeah. never even been in a fight. The nicest person on the planet, but if a person don't grow up with yeah. people like that, you that's a scary, he's a big, loud, scary dude. You know what I'm saying? I understand why people would be afraid of him and be, I've been pulled over before by a new cop. I remember he was new because he was young and he had a, a the window tint measure. I'm like, oh, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. But I noticed his hand shaking. I'm like, fuck, that scared me. So I was extra cool with oh, him. Yeah. So he didn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it's a lot of issues that, we can't even talk about because when you do, people are like, oh, here we go with that race shit. Oh, what do you think about that though, man? Like, I and I'm intrigued because I look, I'm in the same culture and the same vibe and the same. I yeah. got social media, like everybody's got social media. I see the news, I see the mm -hmm. shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's fucking assholes that are black and there's assholes that are white. 100%. I think there's shitty people across the board. There's mm -hmm. a lot of. I've got a ton of friends that are cops that are amazing people, and there's Facts. dickhead cops. Yeah. Like, look, there's. There's there's probably really great pharmacists and asshole pharmacists and woodworkers people, people, and it's just yeah. like human beings. But like, you know, I, I I'm I'm intrigued knowing what I know about humans mm -hmm. and 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 engaging with humans the way that I do. Just being a human, like being in in thinking deeper, right? right. Not just being like one dimensional fuckhead. Yeah. I feel like it's such a fascinating time because. Now more than ever, we have access to technology and information that we've never had, mm -hmm. right? We have speed of data that we've never mm -hmm. had. I mean, right. you hear one one white cop shoots a black guy, black guy, white guy, whatever, bang, it's viral in 15 mm -hmm. minutes, like mm -hmm. fucking town's burning, right? Yeah. That's never happened before, right. right? We talked about this last night. I'm like, you know, Million Man March, they didn't have Twitter. They didn't yeah. have Instagram. Yeah. I'm like, well, the shit yeah. you could fuck up now, the people right. you could gather now would be right. wild, right? Right, right? But I'm just, I'm intrigued because it's like, it is part of where we are. Mm -hmm. It is part of who mm -hmm. we are as a culture. You got young black kids, young white kids, middle-aged, old, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. there just seems to be this this reality that I think that you break it down to the simplest denominator and there's just good people and there's bad people across right. the board. right. You know yeah, what I mean? Not yeah. just black and white, Asian, no, man, the whole thing. So well, it's like. 100%. I would never say that, oh, white people are bad, good, black people yeah, yeah. are good. Oh, that's silly. But as a that's, black man, how, how do you, what do you, what do you see? Like, how do you see, we're never going to have peace, right? We're never, and I'm not just talking about race. That. I don't know. No, about no, that. Let me, let me take it further. Yeah. Let me exclude the race conversation. What mm -hmm. I'm saying is, is like, people have, have have this noble idea that somehow we're going to have peace in the world and everybody's mm. going to come together. Mm. So long as there's evil in the world, which yeah. it's embedded in the mind of man. Right. And it, this ain't race at all. This mm. ain't black or white. I'm just talking about human beings in general. Yeah. So evil has existed since the dawn of creation right. and it'll be here until the fucking, you know, the world set on fire, whatever the hell God's going to do. Right. I believe that. And so, mm. you know, my whole philosophy is like, if I can create a wave big enough of love and of connection and whatever, whatever, then, you know, that wave's going to ride and it's going to pick up as many people as humanly mm -hmm. possible. And people that aren't surfing that wave, not right. going to, but like, what do you see as a black guy who's, who's 
making money on the come up. You have a tribe. You had what a million and a half followers mm-hmm. on on Instagram. You have a huge mm-hmm. um, base of people, a big audience. You know, what do you see? Like, what 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 do we do as a culture to either yeah. tone it down or learn more about it or come yeah. together or you know whatever whatever dialogue. Yeah, communication, conversations. Yeah, conversations. Uh, I I have like I have a lot of cop friends, right? And during 2020, they reaching out to me. We talking. A lot of people just trying to check my temperature, seeing where sure. I was at. And I'm like, bro, I'm I'm good. Like, I'm used to this shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I want to know why you're mad. You know what I mean? And listen, the media tugged at everybody's heartstrings sure. in a real evil way. It was the George Floyd. It was the the other guy. And then the Trump elections, right? It was fucking hot. It was oh, yeah. very volatile, bro. <laughs> And then you got COVID. And- yeah, we, it was so much. And then one of my friends, bro, I had to stop following him. White dude, white cop. I, I I kept communicating with my white cop homies, right? Like, bro, he said, well, well, I can't even be a white man. I'm like, bro, we don't think that. Yeah. We used to think slavery is our fault. Like, bro, that shit doesn't have anything to do with you. Like, right. come on, man. So I would keep him cool. But then I see him go off the deep end one day. I'm like, yo, I'm yeah. follow. Yeah. He was so angry, right? And it's like, um, we we gotta be able to have open dialogue. Yo, Mike, why did like somebody got asked me, because I'm 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 real. Like I'm a real black man. I'm not no I saw a lot of blacks, like bitch ass blacks, like start shitting on black people around that time too, because they was getting attention from Fox News. Mm-hmm. And people are just sellouts to attention. Sure. Cause now they can make money. And they were like really throwing blacks under there. I'm like, you a fucking bag. Bro. Do you know who else said that? It's like, like yeah. Coffee. Do you know Coffee mm-hmm. Anderson? Nah. Coffee Anderson is a badass dude. He's, uh-huh. he's one of my really good friends. Black guy, yeah. country music. Like, okay. Yeah, like grit. Sax is like, hell yeah. <laughs> good looking dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and he's the same way. He's like, dude, like, blacks are shitting on blacks more than anything else. He's like, what bro, the fuck? You know what I, I mean? Listen, I have zero respect for somebody that sells out his family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, like, Racism, well, race exists because tribes exist, right? We're innately tribal. We sh- mm-hmm. we don't have to be anymore, but it's the remnants are still here. It's human beings. It's going know. away, though, but it's still... And it's like, how dare you, bro? Like, how dare you trivialize black pain and you're black because you got some attention from some white people and they're using you because it's cute that you're saying this, this shit. You know how many white people were sending me shit that black people were saying? I'm like, all right, bro. Like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Or not even just white, just not just people who just didn't really, you know, yeah. was on a whole nother side ideologically. It's like, yo, this, yo, stop sending me this. I, I'm familiar with this shit. There's certain dudes, I ain't gonna say their names, that I even said something to. I'm like, bro, you, what the fuck is this? And one guy, he went viral, right? And when we talked, he was like, damn, bro, I'm sorry, you right. And this guy, he's black, but he just, he just hangs with white people. His, that's his culture, and that's cool, right? But bro, this is some shit you don't even understand. Mm. You shouldn't be saying these things. You're going, you making shit look bad. He 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 succeed, he he accepted what I said and agreed, but publicly he still like rode that wave because he mm. got a lot. His following grew a lot. Yeah. I tell you about it off of this shit, but his following grew a lot. And I just have zero respect for him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because people grift for attention. I don't. Yeah, fuck that. I'm a man. I gotta be happy with who I see in the mirror now. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And I I respect, like, I'm sure a white person does not respect a black person grifting to them, mm-hmm. shitting on black people. And even if a white person wanna use him for whatever, he ain't gonna respect them. Just like a snitch to a cop. Sure. They, 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 they calling you a snitch. They're yeah. getting your information and then get rid of you. You know what I'm saying? So I, I have no respect for those kind of guys. But I, I do see this. I don't want to sound all dark on this shit. I see a lot of light coming. Me too. I see humans. I see people moving past all of this shit. Yeah. I see people like, listen, the the American, you know, in a gen, I think they said in a, one or two generations, there's going to be a race up for America. It's going to be biracial kids, like racially ambiguous people, right? You can't stop it. Right. You can't. Race was stupid the first time an interracial person was born. Now what do you do now? Yeah. It well, doesn't so even that's work what I always say. Like, okay. You hear about like reparations and things and people like, I read something the other day in San Francisco, the proposal was like, they were going to give every black person $5 million that was born between this time and this time. And I'm like, 
we're perpetuating some some wildness and it just keeps mm-hmm. going right but like like you said what do you what do you do yeah, like that, like at what point a, in time do you go all right uh cool are we all good can yeah. we all just jam can we all build some shit like that's I don't a know. slippery slope though because here's the thing all right we live in a country in which we were promised reparations right to fight for the north right we did we won we got nothing right so how do you feel about that like what are your thoughts on the reparations I'm, I'm gonna get there i, I don't know I'm like, yeah, run me my bag. I'm going to tell you why. You running Israel bags for no reason. Mm. We didn't fuck Israel up. Why are we supporting Israel? And this is no knock to Jews, but what's the deal? And I don't, and Israel and Judaism is not synonymous. Right. To put, let's, let's make that clear. There's Jews over there getting persecuted. Like real Jews who live by the Torah that, that are righteous people, they're getting fucked up over there because they're like, yo, y'all got to stop doing this, doing that. This don't make big media. But Israel and Ju- Judaism is not synonymous, okay? So United States is supporting Israel. Ha- it's a welfare state, has been for years. Mm. United States fucked up Japan, we fixed it up. Germany, do all our shit. We're here in America, we're Americans. Why we can't get anything, you know what I'm saying? So we started such a deficit, right? Now, let's say, let's say me and you, Let's say just a white man and a black man. Both get the same education, same occupation. All right, we boom, we're moving. We're into the professional world. The white man is going to get way further than the black man for this. Let's say no unfairness happens. This black man probably the first person in his family that made it. So he's helping his family. <laughs> like me. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I take care of everybody. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. My kids will be able to have that real boost. But me, I don't. The white guy, he's probably been set up by his family, decent, right? Maybe he got a house, maybe he got something, college paid for, a trust, whatever. So he don't have to like dig back, you know what I'm saying? He just go, you know what I'm saying? Rob said his dad had a million dollars saved for him. Hmm. I'm like, that's fucking fire. That's crazy. I don't look down, I, I wish I had that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So he's about to need it, and that's fucking yeah. fire that he didn't need it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But but just for average people, you know what I'm saying? We just, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a struggle. Now, I, I have no problem with that. That's me personally, but that's my personality. I kind of like the fact that I started in a deficit and became a millionaire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a flex. But me too. I can't I can't expect a white guy did the same thing. You feel me? Right. <laughs> I, I don't expect everybody to have that kind of sure. wherewithal. It's, life is hard, yeah. man. And I, I attest to that. Life for most people sucks. It's hard, yeah. right? So, you know, I don't put my uniqueness on every black person. That's not fair, right? right? So I know how hard it is to be a black man in this country. You know what I mean? Listen, there's certain things that I dealt with. Like, it's just crazy. Like, getting pulled over. Like, you lost? Like, bro, this is, what year is this? Like, bro, you know I got that? an iPhone. You can't what get lost nowadays. Trust me. <laughs> so, 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 but, but I've learned how to deal with people a certain way. Yeah. I personally don't really deal with race issues anymore, me personally, but that has a lot to do with my economic status and where I live at, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and I, I'm a very confident person, and I think white people that are predatorial on poor blacks can sense who they can fuck with and who they can't. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My son get pulled over, they kind of know me already, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but you know, People, and it transcends race, really. It's, it's socioeconomic <coughs> status, you know what I'm saying? But just typically, blacks are not in that good status. Typically, you know what I mean? So, and I reckon, I know that shit. I tell people all the time, like, bro, I got black privilege. I get, I could speed in my Lamborghini and don't get a ticket. It happens all the time. They be like, I mean, I like this car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so you know, I, I understand it's a socioeconomic right. thing. But when one race is not in it and one race is, it just looks like it's racial. Yeah. But it's not racial. That's low level thinking. Um, now, black people, my message to black people is like, yo, stop fucking complaining. Let's I understand look, I'm not gonna trivialize yeah, like, I, get it. I don't trivialize our shit, sure. right? I'm not yelling at you, but I want you to be strong. Look, yeah. be strong. It's you're creative, you got other skills, you you know what I'm saying? Like, get your shit together because you're gonna spend 10, 15 years of your life complaining and yeah, life man. is gonna go by and you're gonna get old and be a loser. Like yeah. that's not, don't wait on nobody to help you. That's what I teach people, right? 
But listen, if they want to run a... That's a universal message. If they want to run a... If if we can talk about our reparations back, I'll take it. Yeah. Because look, bro, we're giving fucking... What's... uh, Ukraine Uh, billions. Give me some money, bro. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. Because we're helping everybody else. Yeah. And we're right here. And it's just... Listen, I, I trace my genealogy on my mother's side. We got war records of World War One, bro. I got it in my mm-hmm. phone. You know what I'm saying? We fought in every war. Yeah. Bro, like, give us our shit. You promised us. And it's not Sean Whalen pay a black man yeah. some of your money. Like, nah. Our tax dollars, don't nobody know where that shit going. I pay a lot of that shit. Run it back. Yeah. Run it back. Because you, you're helping Ukraine, bro. It, yeah. It's crazy to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, black people aren't the only people saying that shit. I'm going to say and run that yeah, shit yeah. back too. Run fuck, that shit. Fuck run that giving shit back. everybody else money. Run you know that shit back. <laughs> you feel me? So, so yeah. now yeah. Here's, a, here's another level to it though. I know that we're fighting a proxy war against Russia right. through Ukraine. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I will say this. United States is very strategic. A lot of shit we don't understand. Mm-hmm. We're out there doing some crazy shit in the world, but it's probably for our benefit as a country, as a whole, like the big picture. We did the same thing when it was the USSR and we fought them through Afghanistan, the Cold War. Mm-hmm. Cause it was gonna be them or us as the superpower. So we're fortunate, right? We 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 outfitted the Taliban, that was, those are our guys. It is what it is. Yeah. It, it benefited us, all's fair in war. Yeah. So I, I'm understanding of that too. Yeah. But that's a micro conversation. I can't really have with the masses because they don't get that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I they understand even, it, bro. Most people, most people in America, I and mean, statistically, eighty. I think it's eighty-one percent, eighty either either one or eighty-seven percent of uh, people in America are living paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trust me, like yeah. most people are trying to figure out how to pay the mm-hmm. rent, how to, how to like yeah. make sure their gas is on and shit like that. They're right. not worried about socioeconomic issues yeah, and global not. issues, yeah. and they don't. Under, they take their fucking taxes. No offense, down to Walmart and hit up the H and R Block dude yeah. who's trying to get them their six hundred and twenty seven dollar yeah. return. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, millions and billions and trillions. It's like real talk. It's above everybody's pay grade. Yeah. Black, white, yeah. everybody. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying. This is why I feel like the universal message that you're sharing. It's pretty much the same universal message that I'm sharing. It's like become it a free man. We're like, aligned. Get your home in order. We are aligned. You black, know? black. All right. So look, it's not black and white, right? It's poor, rich, mm-hmm. right? And not talking about us. We're different, right? So when you take when you go back to like the days of the Black Panther uh, political party, right? Ku Klux Klan used to come meet with them. White supremacists. They used to. We had the same issues. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The same issues, right? So. Um, now, the Ku Klux Klan was born out of pure hatred, right. but you know, I don't know. I can't get into the history on where they are now. People can know. Google this shit. You can, learn, yeah. you can learn about it. But but there was a lot of like, co- like cooperation and collaboration with blacks. When black leaders got killed, is when white people start listening. You know what I'm saying? Mar- Malcolm X, when he started having white people tapping into him, and like, yo, yeah, this is real. Let's let's unite. They got him out of here. Yeah. Martin Luther King, people don't realize this. When Martin Luther King stopped talking that turn the other cheek shit, yep. they got him out of there. Yep. You know what I'm saying? White Martin Luther King had blacks and whites. You know what I'm saying? Um, Minister Farrakhan, Million Man March, they tried to embrace him. He said they wanted him to do this press t- run, right? Nah, I'm about to go to Africa for a minute. He's an anti Semite and a racist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shut them down on everything. Would you ever get into politics? Nah. Why not? Um, it depends. You know what I mean? I think I have more pull out of politics because I know politicians. Yeah. And my money goes along with a lot of these guys. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm, I'm working with one and one. I ain't going to say where, but I'm trying to get some. Uh, I'm trying to be in first on one of these uh, contracts for psilocybin, the whole uh, process, big, all of that oh shit. Yeah, big so, deal. So I understand what a politician is there for. You just write laws. Yeah. If it could benefit me, I got you back. I don't yeah. give a Democrat, Republican, it don't matter. So, um, but me being in politics, no, because they all fake. They just, they just, they did, they there for a check. Yeah. Where the money coming from? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't, I ain't, I'm above that. Like you're above that. Nobody can, can give me money to, to represent anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, 
Um, yeah, and that's what a politician is. Except for Trump, Trump was like a real one. Like, nah, I got my own money. Yeah. Did you like him? I like I like Trump. Why? I like Trump. All right, let me give you my real. We went straight Trump. from God to religion to like to a king. It's, it's fucking uh, the look, politics. Look, I fucks with Trump. <laughs> I fucks with Trump because he he's kind of honest, yeah. right? I love when they were debating him and Hillary, and she's oh, like, bro. "You don't pay your taxes." Bro. He says, "Cause I'm smart." Yeah, he says, I'm D- playing D- the system. Chappelle. Remember I'm what playing Chappelle the system said? you you set up. Yeah. yeah. So and there she's sitting there smart. I hate politicians, bro. Uh. It's so dishonest. They can't like he's a. Like, She's sitting there with this, mm, like, mm, mm-hmm. well, enough about that. Right. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, so, um, Trump. Now, this is, this is what I didn't like. Right. Now, n- let me say what I like. Trump is a winner. I fucks with that. I fuck with powerful people. Mm-hmm. I just like it. And he's the most unlikely guy to become president. And he, Mister, grab him by the pussy, became president. <laughs> I fucks with that. It's guy talk. Yeah. Like, no, you don't mean that yeah. shit. Oh my God, I can't believe you say that. And we every say, man in America was like, we all say like, ridiculous I've shit. said that shit all the like time, bro. times. <laughs> it's like he's trying to make a big deal about it. And then yeah. these fucking guys, virtual signal. He oh, yeah. said, I can't believe you say that. Shut the fuck up, bro. You get out of here. <laughs> no girl will let you grab her pussy. So that's why you mad. You know what I'm saying? But, but these male feminists, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so shit. I like strong people. It is what it is. Now, Black people felt like he was racist. He's yeah. not racist. I don't think he's racist at all, right? His record does not reflect that. He, Trump was the only guy to deem the Ku Klux Klan a terrorist organization. Which he actually said that, that but didn't they even, spun that all didn't, kinds that of didn't wild even shit. Make, that didn't even make the news, no. you know what I'm saying? So I don't buy that. Now, this is why, and this is some insight for you that you might not know. Black people always think a Republican is racist, right? Oh, totally. And it's a reason for that. Richard Nixon, have you heard of the Southern strategy? Yep. That's why. For those who don't know, around that time, the Democratic Party was wildly racist, right? They had to abandon it because people were getting smarter. Like, mm-hmm. yo, that shit ain't cool. Y'all overtly racist like Biden is, right? So they had to abandon all of this shit, right? So the racist guys had no base. Nixon saw an opportunity. Nixon was a racist, though. Him and Reagan was fucking crazy, right? So he said, but it makes sense. They're old ass white dudes who old that, was, school. that was that shit. So he had an, a, a a brilliant but evil strategy to employ, and that was to dog whistle to the racists in the South. He also got the religious people in the North. That's because abortion was never mm-hmm. a political thing at all. Nobody gave a fuck, right? Until Nixon. So he didn't give a fuck about neither, but he had to. They had to do their little strategy to kind of get the them votes. on their side. And that's what you do to win. Now, Trump is not a politician. He's very crude. Yep. So he was stumbling, fumbling these dog whistles. I heard it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He did Hitler shit. He did all kind of shit, yeah. bro. Trump was off the chain. I'm like, I understand what he's doing. He He's in it to win. So he has to do these things because a Republican need those people right there. That doesn't represent Republicans. You know what I'm saying? But that's a group mm-hmm. of, of voters that they need. It's a, you know? So... I understand that, you know what I mean? But it felt very divisive in this country, you know right. what I'm saying? And I just don't like that. I thought, I really thought that Trump was gonna get in. Yeah, use a strategy to get in, but then unite. Because if if anybody can unite people, I think a strong person, a strong man like Trump could do it. They're also did. very polarizing though. I think that's, yeah. what they, that's what the media, in my opinion, played off of, mm-hmm. you know? But like what you said, the, the power, I think one of the greatest um, moments in political history Besides Reagan calling out Gorbachev when he's standing in front of the mm-hmm. Berlin Wall and he's yeah. like on national TV across the world, like yeah. telling Gorbachev, tear right. down, this, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Was when the very first re- Republican debate, I don't know if you remember this, there's 16 candidates, you got Ben Carson, you got everybody on the stage. And of course, they put Trump right in the middle, right? Like, you put all yeah, the people who aren't going to win cow. shit, you put them on the yeah. edges, you put them right in the middle of the gym. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. And, and I loved him just because he was exactly what you're saying. You, mm-hmm. One of the best business books ever yeah. written is The Art of the Deal. Because mm-hmm. if you read about how he was on the come up, people are like, he got lucky, his dad gave him a million dollars. You and I both know that 90% of lottery winners go broke because they're yeah. dumb as fuck. It ain't yeah. about the money. Yeah. You got to be smart. to. Yeah. So if that dude got a million and he turned it into multi-billions, you got to be smart as fuck. He's a king, bro. There's Period. no doubt about it. But the very first Republican debate, this is why I like the guy from a political standpoint, right, is... I remember, the, and then this question was just for him, mm. and it was it was the Republican base sitting right in the middle, and they're like, "If which of you, if you didn't get the nomination, would run as an independent?" 
Now, that's a loaded question because mm-hmm. it's like you're on the Republican stage mm-hmm. in front of the Republicans trying to win the nomination to become yeah. the Republican candidate, right? So right. it's kind of like which one – basically what they're saying is which one of you, if we didn't basically like jerk you off, mm-hmm. would say fuck you and do it yourself? Now, we both know that there's only one dude on that stage – that's going to be right. defiant and do his yeah. own fucking thing. Yeah. And I'll never forget as long as I live them asking the question. And you, you almost see unanimously like everybody turns towards Trump. Right? right. And they're all looking at him like this motherfucker's the only guy here. Yeah. Right. Homeboy raises his hand. And in that, that moment, I was like, that dude that. is yeah. sitting in front of all of the Republicans, the whole world mm-hmm. saying, if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fucking do it on my yeah. own. I was yeah. like, that's the, that's the kind of guy we want in the, in the country right yeah. now. It is what it is. He obviously decided to become part of the game and they mask up, him. and yeah. you get into DC and you yeah. got to play the game, and, and and which is fascinating. Bro. It, I, I, fuck, I wish man. I could be a fly on the wall to understand Jesus. how they got him on this. But but here's the thing. So so I I respect. Did him all the way up until the and then the January the insurrection January bullshit. Thing, I'm like, yeah. he I saw him spir- I saw him. But he's wild though, dude. You kind of knew. But 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 nah, bro. But. He's like, that's he, my army out there. You know what I'm saying? He, he should have been more measured, bro. Yeah. And he, I felt like he 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 was throwing a temper tantrum. Yeah. He got them people to go do some dumb shit, and then yeah. like, fuck y'all. Yeah. But and I seen I so know. many people. I seen so many people who was like super <clears throat> Trump. Like just the air, the fight just went out of them. Do you know what you know I liked saying? about him the mm-hmm. most is that he, I said this when he first announced his candidacy that he was going to be the dismantling of the two-party system. Mm-hmm. And I see more now mm-hmm. of the fracturing of both parties right. than ever before yeah. because there's so much divisiveness yeah. across the board. I like people that shake shit up. I like yeah. people that make you think. Disruptors. I like people that, that yeah, disruptors mm-hmm. that will get you to, like, get off the fucking sheepish bandwagon and be like, mm-hmm. yo, I got to think for myself. Mm-hmm. What does this really mean? Mm-hmm. What does this really look like? And right. when you get a dude like that who already has money, right. he's already – bro – he doesn't. He doesn't have private jet. We fly on private jets. He's got a jumbo jet. Yeah. He's got a fucking seven twenty seven yeah. or seven thirty seven mm-hmm. with his name on it. Yeah. That's baller shit, right? Baller shit, he bro. doesn't need four hundred thousand dollars a year, which nah, is what the president makes. Nah. He's like, <laughs> that cost me. That's like one that's, trip to Asia right, in my jet. Right, you know what I mean? Right, right. I like people like that. I like people that are willing to disrupt the system, but I, I wrote get a, you to fuck around with like different ideas. You yeah, know? I'm with it. I wrote. I wrote a declaration of freedom for the black, black man, man I saw in that. America, right? And you know, in the subtitle, like this is for all people. This is not just for black. It's for my my white brothers, my Asian brothers, my Hispanic, Middle Eastern, whatever. What's good for us is good for everybody. Mm-hmm. But I need to address black people because we need to be unified on certain things. And one of them was voting. Stop voting. Stop voting. I'm gonna tell you why. Nobody's giving us anything, right? They're asking you for your vote. They're pandering to you. They're coming on black talk shows. Mm. It's so disrespectful, yeah. right? But most blacks don't see it as disrespectful. They're like, oh, this is cool. They're coming over here. These are the regular people, busy, nine to five. They're not looking oh, at, yeah. they're not looking between the lines. And we looking at it like, fuck these guys, yeah. bro. So it's like, look, let's sit to the, we're fourteen percent of the population. Every election cycle, it's a one to three percent margin either way. Right. We can control that shit easy. Right. Why not voting? Let them fill that void so that they have to come to the table with some real substantial shit. Do you know Barack Obama, he did nothing for black people? There was one thing that he could have did that would have been cool. He could have fixed the Flint water crisis, right? Mm. That's poor people, black and white, right? A lot of black people. He went out there, bro. Black people were like, cool, man. He's coming to help one us out. One of us, we got a guy. He coming to help us yeah. out. Did you see that shit? Dude, right, you want those, us crazy? For those, yeah. Look, go ahead. Keep, keep, remind, remind me to tell you my Uber story. Okay. Because I'll forget, but keep going. Okay. So what, if, for people who don't know, Flint, they had um, this governor, this fucking, it was Trump's homie too, this billionaire dude. He got in. They did something to where they rerouted the water to where they was getting some shit water that had um, the shit that's in the walls, the paint shit. Uh, asbestos? Asbestos, something else. Whatever, peel off the water, whatever. In the water is getting people sick, motherfuckers yeah, yeah. dying. What was it called? Lead. lead. That's yeah, it, yeah. lead in the water. Like harmful amounts. People, mm-hmm. people's water was disgusting. It was a bit, it's a crisis. Oh, I think yeah. it's still going on. Barack Obama went and black people were like, cool, he gonna do something for us, right? Yo, he had, he got, <laughs> he had a cup of water out there. And people were like, what is he about to do? 
He started, he says, he didn't even drink it. He like, like his lips closed. Hmm, good water. You know, when I was a kid, we used to chip off paint off the wall and eat it, nothing happened to us. <laughs> bro, we was like, fuck that guy, bro. You a sucker, you uh, know what I'm saying? So, so there's no, even the black president didn't do shit for black people. Look, this so. is why. Black, white, gay, straight, rich, poor. Like, you got to make your own, man. You got to make but your own. this is what's dope about yeah. this country, in my opinion, because yeah. I think what you said earlier, America is one of the, the most corrupt nations on planet Earth. Like, at least we knew Kim Jong-un was killing his people, right? Like, yeah. he was headlined. Well, that's what, that's what they're telling us. We don't know shit. You know what that's I'm what saying? That's what they're telling us, though. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean. I don't. He, true, true. I don't know. True. I, didn't, I, don't know. I wasn't yeah, there. I saw yeah, videos. Yeah. Like, everybody else saw the videos. And you know what I mean? Some of those yeah. dudes were fucking bad, but like here but we in kill America, our people too. we got we got suits and lapel pins and we're mm -hmm. like, no, he can't be the bad guy. And you're like, come on, yeah, man. Bro. I mean, you yeah. look at when we, and, and we could go down the rabbit hole on this thing, but I mean, Dick Cheney, mm -hmm. I mean, you go back and look at the, at the, at Iraq and what happened in Iraq. Like we go, go and invade Iraq, which company gets Had, an $8 billion or whatever the billion what, nothing dollars. Nothing to do with 9-11. Well, it, right, immediately after we invade, it's Dick Cheney's fucking company, Halliburton. Halliburton yeah. gets his multi-billion dollar contract. He's the chairman of the board. He's the vice president of the United States of America. And we, we could talk about it. War's big happens. business, man. Yeah, it's, Racism it's, is big business. This is it all is. big business. No, it is, bro. So, so you're right. But here's the thing, too. Here's a caveat to this government shit. Fuck the government. Yeah. The federal government has very little impact on our lives. Right. I That's agree. what people got to understand. 100%. Your local government has a lot of impact on your life, where you live at. Right. We should be very... and. People got a lot of influence over their local government if they go get involved. Even right. if you don't got money, you still this, can. Yeah. You can go and annoy the fuck out of them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but anybody with a little bit of money, you got a lot of pull. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I got politician homies right now. You know what yep. I'm saying? So, and it's not about political shit. It's about business shit sure. for me. You know what I'm saying? So people got to be mindful of that. What's important is your school board. That's a part of your local government. Mm -hmm. You know. The, the, the sheriff's department, all of that shit right where you live at, you have influence over. Yeah. The federal government is, is a level above pageantry. It's right. it's damn near like the the, the monarchy in Britannia. Yep. It really ain't shit. Oh, marijuana is legal in this state, but illegal federally. Like, what? Wild. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't make any sense. No, no sense. Yeah. And Trump saw that when he was in office because he was frustrated because he couldn't get shit done. It's, it's, we gotta, but this is what I like, what I love about this country. We got a lot of fucked up shit going on, but we we solid, bro, because the founding fathers created this country. The framework of this country was brilliant. Yeah. You know, we uh, got independence. Well, white people got their independence from Br Britannia, right? Because it was corrupt as fuck and it was a dictatorship or a monarchy, right? So we set it up here to where there's no kings. Every country, I mean, every state, every city, every county has its own government. Right, so it's like a red tape out the yin yang, which is a good thing. I know it's annoying to get shit done, but it's a good thing because there's so much checks and balances, right? So you choose it. Look, you don't like the gun laws here, you go here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like it, pick your poison. Like where it's do you want to be? You can end up right. wherever you want to be. Right. And the federal government have no impact on the shit. There's no draft. You can't make us do shit. Right. Um, we're f we're really free. Yeah. If you watch 2020. Look, 2019, going into 2020, I was in the process of getting me a, an apartment in Bondi Beach in Sydney, Australia, right? We were going to set up a little logistics uh, setup uh, for, for my company just to have our own distribution there. And I had a reason to be there because I like Australia. I like all the English-speaking countries that I've been to. They seem free, but they're not. Mm. Why? They don't have guns. guns. They don't have guns. It's that simple. Yep. Them motherfuckers was on martial law, bro. I know. I got so many friends out there. They was like, I said, what is it like? They're like, there's horses. Cops it's are wild. on horseback. Yeah. Making sure nobody's on the street after five. That's why everybody's like, fuck America. I'm going to leave America back. Yeah, Go ahead. Right, yeah, like, right. I've been around yeah, the world. Yeah. I've seen shit. Trust we're me, ain't only, going anywhere. We're the only nation besides Mexico, but Mexico has just fucked up rules. We're the only nation on this planet that, had, that citizens have the rights to bear arms. Mm -hmm. So people got to realize, look. Even if you're not into guns, you, you gotta like. It's the reason you're free. It's why we're free. Right. Cops are guys with guns too. Right. They're not running up in our shit because we got guns. You right. know what I'm saying? These other countries, they got treated like shit. Mm -hmm. One of my boys, he's a, he trains uh, boxers. He was in Paris, in France, training this guy during that time. I said, damn, Paris, what's it like? He said, it sucks, bro. It's martial law. 
they're out there. There's nobody in the streets after mm-hmm. a certain time. Fuck that. Those are history, us. bro. That's crazy. America's a dope spot, man. It's the best. I love. I love the history, and I love how fucked up it is. But I love how yeah. it's created we, a lot of great shit. Yeah, like, but you and I, I look at it like we're having this podcast. We get to send this out to the world, and there's millions of people that watch us. But like, you know, we're the torchbearers of of what came before are, us. Bro. You know we what are. I mean? My we grandfather are. fought in the wars, and this and this and this. And you look at like, I'm here right now. You're here right now. Mm. And you got a purpose. You know what I mean? And anybody listening that's like, I'm not really sure what our purpose is, like, just go walk outside. Right. Realize you're part of this experience of life. Like, yeah. you have the ability to create. You right. have the ability to build. You got right. the ability to dream and to literally take anything you want and make it reality. Right. And you can look at it and say, well, this is a handicap and this is a handicap and this is a mm-hmm. handicap. Or you can just be like, yo, if, if if somebody like you can do it and somebody like me can do mm-hmm. it, where we don't come from like silver spoons and mm-hmm. nobody's giving me shit, mm-hmm. what's really your excuse? Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what I love about the conversation uh, too. Another is- reason why we're so great as a nation is this, is the black and white thing. I'm gonna tell you, who was it? Um, Cleopatra of Comet, Egypt married Julius Augustus Caesar, right, of Rome to bring two powerful nations, mm-hmm. make them more powerful, right? We have such a diverse melting pot of, of cultures. Yep. That's why it's so fucking cool here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And like your your culture, your history, the wisdom that you got from it mixed with mine makes shit cool. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, I've been like, I've been to a lot of countries and they be good, but it's just that. Yeah. It's just that, it's just that. Here is everything, yeah. you know what I mean? And we created a, a real beautiful uh, uh, orchestra of history and culture in this country. And that's why we're the most innovative. Everybody wanna be here. Mm-hmm. There's so many people talk shit, but they want, but they here. Dude, you, you know don't what I'm see boats here. sailing into fucking Paris. It's not happening. You don't see it's boats sailing into fucking nah. London with a bunch of refugees. Like right. people coming nah, to America nah. for a nah. reason. And I, and I know a lot of people have an issue with immigration. I'm like, yo, this is a nation of immigrants. Right. I'm with it. Bring that. It's yeah. some brilliance that's gonna come out of that. Yeah, it might be some bullshit too. Yep. But we the most bullshit in our own shit. Yeah. And immigrants come here and outwork us. That should be a like work. Like let's right. we're so lazy and soft here because we got it made. The poorest American is richer than ninety most percent, percent of, the world. of the world. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. So when people got when people understand that and really put that into context, I'm like, yo, I have a head start in this planet. Yeah. Just go. You know, this is the greatest nation on this planet. Yeah. I'm very fortunate to be here. Me you too. Know what I mean? And the other thing too is it's short, man. You know, I've had enough people in the last year exit life early, exit life, mm-hmm. you know, unexpectedly that it's yeah. like it's just created an urgency in me. Like, mm-hmm. I want to live, man. Yeah. Like, I want to fucking build some shit. Yeah, I got kids. Like, yeah. I don't have time to fuck around. You know right. what I mean? Like, the small talk, the yeah. dumb shit, yeah. peddling, like, you know, all, all of the smut that you see all day long mm-hmm. on social media. Yeah. Like, you know, you look at what you post and I mm-hmm. post. I mean, yeah. yeah, we could talk about policies and things yeah. and this and that and the other, but it's like a lot of that shit I don't have control over. And I want to, I, I want to build what I, I can don't, control. I don't really dig into you know? that shit publicly because it's a way bigger picture too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And that's not my world. Right. My world is this: the few people that follow me, I want to give them some heat. I want to give them some tactics and methods to level up. You know what I'm saying, so that they could be free thinkers. I love connecting with people like you. Like, look, I was always fascinated by you because I'm like, yo, me and him is so similar. Mm -hmm. I fuck with this guy. But you're different, you know what I'm saying, because you're a white dude in Utah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You are authentic, pure representation of of a lot of white dudes that want to be like you. And I'm that of a black person, right? People think that me and you would not ever fucking come together, shit like that. I'm like, nah, we supposed to. Me and Wes, we, we hang out a lot, right? And we did a post one time, I said, Mansa Musa and, and Alexander the Great. I saw that you know what I'm saying? in his new house. Yeah, you know, so people like love, it's like, yeah, bro, we, this is what it's about. Like, intelligent, powerful people come together, yeah. share, share trade secrets, you know what I'm saying? Collaborate, that's what it's about. When you're just a singular-minded type of person, you're very limited. Right. That's why places like, look, there's a lot of cool shit to say what you say about North Korea. They got their shit together for them, right? But they're so limited. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? China, limited. So yeah. many places, limited. 
here we're unlimited. Yeah, you know, you got this, unlimited potential. This is magical here. You know, you what got I'm a saying? supercomputer sitting in your hands and a cell phone. Right. You're listening to this right. podcast right now right. on a fucking device that could answer any fucking question for you. Right. That's what I love about too. You, you mentioned Wes. Um, I haven't hung out with him yet, but he and I mm. talk all the time. We were mm. going to try and connect this weekend. Yeah. But like uh, the one thing that I really am passionate about is helping people understand that like you think that because you got some fucked up past that you got nothing to offer the mm. world. And the people that are the most powerful in my life right now mm. are people that have some fucking wild ass yeah. past. You know what I mean? It makes so you interesting. That's what I'm saying. It yeah. makes you interesting. But like I understand too that I went through my divorce so I can help people that are going mm. through this shit. You mm. know what I mean? Like you, 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 your history is what makes you, we talked about yeah. this earlier. Life is what makes me an expert. Right. I've fucked a lot of things up. I've built a lot of things, yeah. but I've gotten to this place yeah. where it's like, well, Sean, this is the right way to do it the wrong way. I don't know what the fucking right way or wrong way mm. is, but I know what God's telling me to do every day and what's mm. in my soul. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I see the light shining brighter. I see more and more people coming into my space mm -hmm. that weren't there yesterday. And right. it's like, I dig that. I vibe on that. Yeah. Like I vibe on these conversations. I vibe on the relationships and on the expansion and like my encouragement to people is get your fucking head out of your ass man and realize mm -hmm. you're alive yeah. like you woke up today if you're yeah. listening to this you won the fucking lottery you might be busted ass broke mm -hmm. it doesn't fucking matter but god gave you another shot right. to listen to a podcast like right. this maybe eliminate some bullshit you got going on mm -hmm. in your space but like you know what i'm gonna build something if you can do it and i can do it then i can that's fucking a, do it right so it's like really understand that you might be holding your head down. You might be looking at, well, I'm this or I'm this or like I dealt a shitty fucking hand. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. Then deal yourself a new fucking hand. Mm -hmm. Like write a new check. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. Close that book. Write That's a new it. fucking book. And there's That's literally it. nothing, nothing stopping you. Listen, I, I'm going to say this. Like I probably got to get to the airport soon, but yeah. look, write, write, write your new, write your story. Look, yeah. I had a story, bro. Like I spent years of my life doing, it's crazy. I spent, I invested so much time in a life that was not sustainable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Years, right? It crashed and burned, came to an end. I was literally homeless, right? Nobody knew. I stuck to my guns. I said, I ain't no loser. I rewrote my life, my, my story. Now I'm back on top. Oh, yeah. Legal with no, no concerns, right? Anybody can do it. Yep. You know how I got through that shit? I focus on my children. I focus on the, my divine essence, and that was my divine purpose and my divine purpose once you're a father is your children you know what i'm saying so i focus on that only right and i kept positive thoughts in my head this is the things that people don't talk about too often but you, you probably i don't know if you do or not but you are where you at because you think positive for mm -hmm. yourself yeah. there's no negative self like, i can't do that yeah i love what you said uh, last night when they said you gonna pass pass uh sean's podcast yeah you ain't passing mine. Yeah. That's how you supposed to. That's how my mind works. Yeah, bro. So, so. <laughs> but I want you to think, though, though. Yeah. I want you to think that's that. Cute and that I want you, you to roll that, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, these are the mind states of champions, yeah. winners, people that really make it in life, people that recite mantras that tell themselves positive, powerful things. It works, man. It people fucking think works. These affirmations are not corny. Nope. They work. You know what I mean? Look, uh, a guy at Asana, we was in Asana the other day, and he does. he's a part of Tony Robbins' platinum elite, yeah, yeah. whatever, and he said, yo, we be in there, he have us yelling like, I, lo I love numbers, numbers love me. I, I'm like, damn, that's dope. Yeah. On that level, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That level, People are reciting mantras. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're giving themselves positive self-talk. They're they're putting that into existence. Planting a seed in their subconscious mind and letting that shit grow. Like you said, it works. it's gonna grow. So people gotta really tap into that to really rewrite, to create an archetype architect or engineer the world and the reality that you want. You can. Yep. Or you can let everybody else do it for you. Yeah. Or you can sit around that's, and that's cry all day long yeah. and it's your choice. But you can complain all you yeah. want. But you're, you're a cool motherfucker, dude. I'm glad we connected too, for real. Hey, Seriously, like I, I, I see I'm you excited. as a brother, man. You know Straight what I mean? Up. Likewise, Hell like yeah. I feel like this is gonna be the first of many. I'm coming down to your spot. Yeah, you know what I mean? I gotta fun. go to the yeah. mothership and, and we're supposed see that. to we're supposed to uh, take a journey while we did this, but we could do it over there. We're gonna do. I yeah. bet you we're gonna journey a lot yeah, in the sure. future. You know for what I sure. mean? Okay, last thing, last thing you want to leave with the tribe. Last month, last conversation, last line, last thing. Like mm. if this was the last thing you were gonna say, what is it? All right, I said this yesterday, I'm gonna say it again. Because I want people to take, like, to figure out what it's gonna take to to do this, what I'm gonna say. This may not be everybody's final thing, but this is mine. 
So imagine the life that I have to live to have this. I do want to die at home in my favorite chair with my wife next to me and my children and all my loved ones. Like in celebratory energy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not sad because I fucking killed it at life. Mm -hmm. That's my goal, my desire, my ambition. So I have to live my life accordingly to get that. So I'm gonna just leave that with y'all. Whatever yeah. it takes to get that, do it. Michael Sheed, you're a scholar and a gentleman, my friend. Good times. Likewise, you too. We're gonna do brother. this again. Let's do All right, it. everybody. Share the shit out of this because this was some good conversation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, let us know when when uh, we gotta do this again. Hell soon. yeah. Hell All yeah. right, man. Peace. Cool. See you guys. I'm I supposed. Got, me I got pissed so bad. Uh, me. Has the longest podcast ever. He's been for